Hello, welcome to RTGG Gaming. Can you believe you have to explore for a while? はどうしますマゲッシュハイブロウェルトベンシンハイそれは言えない正解ですここからどうぞお二人は行幸様が本日招待したお客様ですねその通りけど今のは客人の暗号ではなく幽変限定の暗号絶運の間から帰った人。この宮殿の位置は全ての山よりも高くここからリーウエコーの全貌を見ることができるわ商売を始めた時からこの宮殿を作るための資金を集めてきた天守園になった後凄腕の職人たちに依頼して増築を続け最初部屋一つ程度の広さだった軍玉閣も今やリーユへ上空の月を覆い隠すほどになったそしていつか七国を覆うことになると私軍玉閣に登れる客人はそう多くないセピュロス騎士団の代理団長は手紙の中であなたを褒めてたわだからあなたがリーユへに着いた日から私はあなたを探したそしてあなたたちが防除旅館に着いた時にあなたたちの動向を把握したまさかオーナーって七星の部下なのか違うわ防除旅館の者全員私たちの部下よウェイウェイ奇襲のところでそうよねこんな距離から盗み見はできないわ地獄の働きよあなたたちに興味がある関心を持つのも当然よええ仙人と付き合いのあるあなたが私たちを信じないのもわかる今回は誤解を解くために招待したのやがジャパニーズ3だみんな待ってよ
இவ்வளவு நேரம் பேசினது ஜாப்னிஸா ஆமா I believe that you've heard of the Archon War. Many gods used to walk this earth, and many long wars were fought between them that did not abate until 2,000 years ago. Much blood was shed, and many lives were lost. In the end, only seven victors remained standing in Tevat. They built cities and nations on the corpses of the vanquished, and thus began the era of the Seven. You can see Goyun Stone Forest from here, I trust. It is no natural rock formation. Those are giant spears of rock hurled by Rex Lapis during the war. Beneath the spears lie those cast down by Rex Lapis in those days, gods that failed to seize the title of Archon. Not only is it true that gods may die, but so too has the membership of the Seven changed over the last two millennia. Another Lord of Geo will arise sooner or later. Yet, how are we to forget Rex Lapis? When that time comes, the relationship between the people of Liyue and the gods and Adepti will surely be different from before. Even in a new era, the Liyue Chising remain Rex Lapis's former subjects. Do you really think us capable of having played a part in his demise? Of lacking the foresight to see the certain repercussions? Why hide the Xavier then? <laughs> that day at Yujing Terrace, it was also very sudden. Even I was caught completely off guard. You were there, you no doubt saw. But our enemy has long lain hidden within the harbor. If we do not act against them now, they will surely gain the upper hand. Hiding the Exuvia was a necessary maneuver to take the initiative back. To play the spider while our foes scurry about. Uh, who's this enemy you're talking about? What do you think, Traveler? Huh? What are you two talking about? Well answered. Uh, huh? <sighs> the scenery out here is fine indeed. But the wind is a little strong. Our preparations to receive guests within are complete. So please, this way. Be at ease, you two. Make yourselves at home if you wish. Happy birthday, na tulja to sulunga, Sultan Sunan. Huh? Can we really? I have invited you two here as friends. And when friends come over to play, our enjoyment comes first. Naturally. Is that what I think it is? Whoa! Isn't this that legendary wall? Why, you've kept your ear to the ground, I see. That's because even the storytellers are talking about it. Everyone's after a piece of paper from that wall. It's super famous. That's because that wall records Leo's secrets. 
Merchants have always been attracted to secrets. But the secrets of the mercantile world are of no interest to you, are they, Traveler? You're rather special, really, and I think you're quite aware of that. If possible, I'd like to have your trust. Thank you, Sultan. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> You'd pick Kuching? Nah, I had a feeling. I originally thought her a bit too hard-headed. With someone of her character on the Chising, I've had some extra messes to clean up behind the scenes. But after she said those words, the time of the Adepti has long passed. If even the Liyue Chising don't want to face that truth, then what future is there for Liyue? Sanji, hi bro, welcome to the stream. Welcome, welcome. Well, I must say that quite a few of my doubts have been dispelled. I won't deny that Rex Lapis's passing seems advantageous to us. But, for Liyue's sake, we cannot allow ourselves to be shackled by rumors of our usurpation of power. I suspect that the field has a hand in these rumors. Indeed. It seems that you understood what I meant to say from the very beginning. I called for the gag order and for the exuvia to be hidden to temporarily stabilize the situation and also to prevent something similar to the incident in Mondstadt. <laughs> yes, for sure. And the female characters can't see <laughs> With Rex Lapis's death, the Fatui have busied themselves with many clandestine actions beyond their diplomatic remit. Allowing the rite of parting to take place was also meant to buy some time for us to take control of Liyue's administration. <sighs> It's exactly as Zhongli said. The Qixing only provided the venue for their right so they could use us for their own ends. Wait, that's right. Speaking of ends, could I say one other thing? Morning, Jinxing, evening, Jiji. My suggestion. Hmm, sure, Panila me. Of course. Of course. But I just heard that anyone who sends a greeting gift gets a little something in return. So, does that include us? Seriously, Paimon? Seriously? <laughs> it's all right. I like direct people. Well, we have made quite a bit of trouble for you recently. How about this? You can pick any one object here as you please. And you may take it with you. Yay! Paimon was just waiting for you to say that! Let's see, what should we get? <gasps> One of the sheets on that wall! Huh? Don't look at Paimon like that! One of these sheets of paper will sell for crazy prices, even if it's only as large as Paimon's fingernail! Thank you. Just imagine. How much more a whole untorn sheet would sell for? Let's grab one! The biggest one! Huh? Well, that was an easy...
easy search. The biggest sheet is right up there in the most obvious spot. Let's go with that one. La 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 la. Let's see what's written on it. Huh? There's a place marked with a circle on here. <gasps> oh, could it be treasure? Whatever it is, it better make us filthy rich. Sigil of permission, something, something, fatui, research, copy. Huh? Aw, oh, that doesn't sound like treasure at all. That's an Oh, this piece of paper shows that a cheesing spy discovered traces of classified fatui research on the sigil of permission. Oh, Ningguang did say that the Fatui have been up to all kinds of mischief in the shadows of Liyue. Spreading rumors, wanting to get their hands on the Archon's body and whatnot. But research on the sigil of permission? Paimon wonders what they're up to. Speaking of which, there's also some connection between you and the sigil of permission. Seems there's still more for us to find out. Ningguan is clearly trying to steer us there. Oh, you really think so? Well, should we not go then? No, what I mean is... Oh, so you're saying that it's precisely because we can't completely trust Ningguan that we should confirm the truth of what she says for ourselves. Ah, that's a pretty good. That's way out of Paimon's league. Paimon thinks she's been nothing but good to us. Mm -hmm. mm, anyway, we'll see if you're onto something. Huh? Um, before we look for Zhongli at Dihua Marsh, let's go to the place marked out on these papers and see if the Fatui really are up to no good there. Any bishops? Needle, gems, there are no chickens. Okay, Nala Papu Dorigra. Teleporter in Jamar, put on the channel. Come, sever night from day. 
Looked like the coffee of the I haven't thing. seen this pattern before, but where? Oh, Paimon knows! It looks just like the sigil of permission the child gave you. Hmm. But how did a relic of the Adepti end up in the hands of someone like Child? Suspicious. It's not just here, really. Oh, that's right. Cloud Retainer said that when the Lord of Geo 
created the sigil of permission, it wasn't to be used as some old relic. Talismans like that were once used in the Archon War to channel divine powers. Maybe the Fatui are copying the sigil of permission in hopes of achieving a similar effect. Being able to channel divine power in battle? Whew, that sounds pretty dangerous. Seems the Fatui are definitely buying something. And the plot thickens. We'll need to keep an eye on Child, that's for sure. Hmm. All right, that's enough sticking around here. We gotta go meet up with Zhang Li soon. The last stop on our right of parting preparations tour is Dihua Marsh. Let's go! Hi, hi, good morning. In the channel. Right on time. I myself only arrived moments ago. Did you enjoy your visit to the Jade Chamber? It was so big and pretty and expensive. Paimon's never seen such a fancy schmancy place before. Indeed. It's second to none in all of Liyue. Then you met with Ningguang, I trust? What did you talk about with her? She's super rich and so generous. Oh, Paimon thinks she's very friendly. Business people are always friendly when it suits their interests. Yeah, her take on Ningguang is quite different from Paimon's. She thinks that even the tactless Yuhang is more trustworthy than her. Oh, so you also met with Kuching then. What did she have to say? She said 
The time of the Adepti has long passed. If even the Liyue at Qixing don't want to face that truth, then what future is there for Liyue? <laughs> no respect for the Divine. Indeed, contrary to the Everbold Kuching, Ningguo, although she's friendly, there's no way of clearly discerning her true intentions. Ningguo is highly intelligent. Yes. She has only relied on herself to rise to her current position. No, it's said that she's the one behind the constant expansion of the Jade Chamber. It's the second most important thing to her. Even if she ever gave up the position of Tianxuan, she would never give up the Jade Chamber. The Jade Chamber is only second? What's the most important thing to her then? Why, Mora, of course. All Ningguang talked about was the Fatui this and the Fatui that. She said that after Rex Lapis was murdered, the Fatui have constantly been trying to sink their fingers into Liyue and that they aren't to be trusted. That is how the Fatui have always been. It does. Hmm. No matter what they may be planning, you must be careful when dealing with the Fatui. Oh. So. To get for the right of parting in Diwa Marsh? Yes, as a matter of fact, there is. Today, we'll be gathering wild glaze lilies. Glaze lilies? But why did we come all the way out here? Doesn't the garden in Yujing Terrace have some? Even Qingsa Village has glaze lilies. Oh, right! Paima remembers that Madame Ping is always tending to flowers. Maybe we could ask her. No. Those lilies have all been gardened by people. They won't do at all. Dihua Marsh used to be full of glaze lilies. It is a sort of joyful flower that listens to human song. Before the Archon War, Dihua Marsh was all dry land and fertile soil. But the war caused landslides, and the land was flooded turning it into the marsh you see now. Nearly all... Of course, there are some kinds of flowers that have been preserved and gardened by people in the city. Wild glaze lilies have the strongest fragrance. If we want to follow the true tradition of the rite of parting, we must grind up the wild lilies and place the powder in a censer of everlasting incense. But I'll need your assistance in gathering these flowers. You may need to pick up them. No, I need you to sing to them. Singing to the flowers will make them more fragrant. Ah, uh, so how good is your singing? Ah, uh, I can hold really? it. Really? Why doesn't Paimon believe you? We'll only know once she starts singing. What about her? Whenever you're ready. Da 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 da. What happened? These flowers are jumping. They look really angry. Is this because you sang a song for Mom Dad that they don't understand here, Leon? Oh, remember 
for that. Yeah. Uh. Let's continue it again. I'll protect us. Ready, steady, go! <laughs> This little monster is known as a whopper flower. Hmm. Strange. These petals look interesting. The glaze lilies used as a disguise were buried with the whopper flower for too long. The result seems to have surprisingly potent medicinal value. Let's collect what we can of these petals. Well, that's nice and all, but will those petals be useful for the rite of parting? Unfortunately, no. Oh, that's so lame. Excuse me. Yeah, Are you works. searching for glaze lilies? Oh, hey, it's... What's her face? I... Pyman can't remember. Hello, traveler. I'm surprised you still remember my name. Ah, oh, that reminds me. How was your visit to the Jade Chamber? Well, it sure would have been better if you told us how to get up there. Didn't I tell you the way? Surely I did. Nope. We found the way on our own. It isn't a secret. No buffs you just us in your name. Oh, I see. Uh-oh. I guess I really did forget to tell them. Huh. Something seems a little off about Ganyu. She's acting different from the first time we met. Where's her serious attitude now? Ah, oh, well, I met you at that time as an emissary of the Tianquan. But now, I am simply out on a stroll to see the flowers. You came all the way out here to see the flowers? Why not just enjoy the gardens of the city? <sighs> Yujing Terrace is where Rex Lapis parted from this world. If I strolled through those lonely gardens now, I wouldn't be okay. able to bear it. There's some... Wait. Whenever my duties take me near Yujing Terrace these days, I draw the windows to block my view of the gardens. Oh, sorry. We shouldn't have brought it up. No, it's quite all right. I, I just sure haven't processed my emotions right? yet. When the Archon War came to its end 2,000 years ago, the first iteration of the Seven would gather in Liyue and drink with Rex Lapis. But five of those original Seven had already passed before Rex Lapis, it's truly a changing of the guard. Yes, now that the spirit of Rex Lapis has returned to the heavens, only Barbados of Mondstadt remains of the first seven. The other five, including Inazuma's Raiden Shogun, are no longer the same friends from 2,000 years ago. Of the current seven Archons, the youngest is Sumeru's god of Dendro. She is merely 500 years old, whereas Rex Lapis was more than 6,000 years old at the time of his passing. This means that Liyue had been under Rex Lapis's rule from the moment it was first founded 3,700 years ago. The city... So what do you think of this? Huh? This... This is a little sudden. I... As a mortal, I've never dared to imagine a Liyue without Rex Lapis. But as an Adeptus, I think I will eventually come to grips with reality. Huh? Did you just say, as an Adeptus? Yes, I... I am a mix of human and Chilean. After the war ended, I signed a contract with Rex Lapis and took the position as secretary for the Qixing. I've continued those duties to this very day. So you are half killing that explains the haunts. Well, uh, let's save that conversation for another day. You say that you are here looking for glaze lilies? 
I also know where wild I'll blaze lilies can be found. See, I'll I've just picked there. one myself. Here, you may have it if you wish. All for need, all for need. <laughs> we dare not refuse it. We dare it. not refuse it. Oh, so did you sing a song before you picked the lily? Hello. Indeed, I did. All for need, all for need. I know this tradition well. In fact, I sang a local Leo a ballad to it. Wow, so you really know your stuff, too. Thanks, Ganyu. No, it is you who I should be thanking. If not for this chance meeting, I never thought that I would be able to contribute to the upcoming farewell for our ancient lord. If you would excuse me, I should return to my work now. Good luck. And that just about does it. Our preparations for the rite of parting are mostly finished. <laughs> Given the ease of picking glaze lilies, I think this was a fitting end to our tasks in more ways than one. Zhong Liu seems suited to working in agricultural development. Yeah, Paimon can already imagine him starting a business in Liyue. <laughs> <laughs> I've had enough ventures in my life already. Beginning a new undertaking is always difficult at first and requires no small amount of effort. And once business is at full steam, the stress of it all only wears away at you over time. So you must be careful to take the time to step back and re-examine yourself. If left unchecked, the wear and tear on your heart may go well past mending. Wow. See? Jolly sounds like he's already seen it all. <laughs> All right, I think it's about time we head back to Leo at Harbor now. Change it up and none of you know them. We talk. consulted to Wongsheng Funeral Parlor. Mr. Zhongli, I presume. The Millilith are watching our every move now. These are desperate times. We mustn't act rashly. Desperate times? The Adepti of Joyung Karst are finally on the move. Do they intend to exercise force? Most likely. I've heard that some members of the Qixing have already gone to meet them. However, both sides were quite obstinate mm. and hid an impasse. It seems inevitable, given the current situation. Hmm. The Adepti do not acknowledge the Qixing. They only acknowledge the contracts of the Geo Archon. If the two sides come to blows, Liyue Harbor will be in no position to stop them. Surely the Liyue Qixing are not the sort to give in so easily. Huh. Their boneheadedness is known throughout the lands. Yet it's because of that obstinacy that mortals and Adepti are now on the verge of conflict. And what now? How is it that the Fatui have come under fire? Ah, that's all Ningguang's doing. She proclaimed that in these tumultuous times, the Millilith must rein in the actions of the Fatui. Only now do they want to start keeping tabs on us? 
<laughs> That's the chi sing for you. Anyway, Mr. Zhongli, you're one of Child's close associates. Please understand that your actions will reflect on us. Don't let anyone catch you off guard. It looks like things are about to boil over in Liyue Harbor. Is there anything we can do? Do you intend to use your neutral identity as an intermediary between both sides? Or will you use your sword to turn the balance? Neither path is an easy one. Oh, by the way, Mr. Zhongli, we've heard that the Wangsheng Funeral Parlor has also been caught up in all of this. They're currently squaring off with the authorities at the gates. Things are taking a turn for the worse. I'm afraid I must leave now to handle things back at Wangsheng Funeral Parlor. I hope that Master Hu has been able to keep things under control for the moment. Consider your next course of action carefully, Traveler. If you're trying to prevent an explosion, it may be wisest to look for the fuse first. <sighs> Having connections with the Fatui seems to be quite the double-edged sword. <laughs> so what does Zhongli mean by looking for the fuse? Oh, Paimon gets it! If there's anyone that wants to see the whole city turned upside down, it's definitely him! He must be waiting for the moment when no one is watching to do something really bad! But where could we find him now? Where would he go at a time like this? What are we? The show begins. Where is the killer? Low here. Okay, cut it off. Golden Shadow, recommend 47. There's still a long road ahead. Afternoon tea.
We better check on the egg for first. Oh, right. Back to business. It's quiet. Too quiet. Surely someone's gotta be guarding something as important as the Exuvia. Huh? Look! What happened here? They've been knocked unconscious. Uh -oh. Paimon smells trouble. Quick, we have to go make sure that the Exuvia is all right. Iram, sit up, Dagana. Rex left. You've already fulfilled your task as guides, so why do you still linger here? Haven't you already seen enough trouble for today? Huh? Who's there? <sighs> if you were Fatui, I imagine that you would be entitled to a generous reward from the Tsaritsa herself. But now, you're nothing but dross, and you're in my way. <laughs> Although I'm deeply grateful to you that I was able to effortlessly find this secret location. Don't you think that trying to stop me now would just be wasted effort? Stopping the more immense, hiding away the Exuvia. <laughs> the Chising are really pulling out all the stops this time. So you've been planning to take the Gnosis from inside the Exuvia all along? <laughs> As one of the eleven Fatui Harbingers, it's my duty to see the will of the Tsaritsa fulfilled. She will get that which she desires. Not if I have anything to say about it. I won't allow to get near the Xavier. <laughs> I'm not asking for your blessing, and there's nothing you can do to stop me anyway. The time for discussion and diplomacy has already passed. I mean, if it were up to me, I would have skipped that stage to begin with. But I'm will- Either way. We now come to my favorite part, a simple pleasure, and one that I am oh so delighted to be sharing with you. The battle. Battle? So you're the type that goes looking for trouble, huh? <laughs> you could say that. <sighs> when Signora offended the deities outside the cathedral in Mondstadt, she swiftly left the scene once her mission was accomplished. Instead of confronting you directly, she chose to rely on the snow and ice to make her escape. She wouldn't want the knights to come running towards the sound of battle now, would she? When she faces a worthy opponent, she will prioritize her mission, weigh the outcomes, and consider the consequences of her actions. But as for me, the greatest pleasure of being a harbinger lies in crossing blades with strong opponents. We won't let what happened in Mondstadt ever happen again! Oh, so you intend to fight me? Good. I won't kill you, Traveler. I'll just play along, to feel the thrill of battle. Besides, you could never defeat me, not even in your wildest dreams. But hey, try to relish the fight anyway, because if you ask me, without that, what else is there? I could never defeat you. You are completely delicious. <laughs> Fighting talk, I love it. Now let's see you live up to it. This chance is hard to come by, so show me all you've got. So very few ever get the chance to square off with the Fatui Harbinger. So come now, amuse me, and don't you dare disappoint. Wide open! Uh, you're toast! Be amazed! Uh, 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 Poor surprise! Time. So quick uh, to flee! Yes. Your life is mine! Try 
behind this. A clear shot. <laughs> nice and spicy. By royal decree. You've made some progress. Huh. Not bad. It's nothing. You've got a trick or two. Haha, <laughs> good. No wonder Senora was so wary of you. Well, that just means I can go all out. Brace enough. yourself. This is about to get tough. Now, show me what you can do against the might of a harbinger. No, you see that there. Give up. I'll crush you. Some skills. Hiding back there. Help! Wait. Break. The victor is missed. Are you? You? I think you're all in me. Not bad. Your swordsmanship is quite impressive. But that's about as far as you'll get. <laughs> Didn't think you had that card hidden up your sleeve. You were just playing us to get close to the Exuvia! Oh, quiet down. Stop acting like some wide-eyed recruit. You've seen this world. You of all people should know. This should have been expected! Do you? Well then, I'll be taking Morax's gnosis now. <laughs> I see. Well, this is most unexpected. You... You beat me to it, didn't you? Come on, come on, come on. You got to the Gnosis ahead of me, didn't you? Did you simply move faster? Or did you leak the information?
bring the gold medals to me on purpose. No matter. Hey. 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 That is too full to get out. Oh, I'm just not going to get out. Now, don't make me take it from you. Oh, yeah, take it. Take it. I'll take care of it. They will fire them, they will.
As you wish. Impressive enough from the end. Since we're all to that more. Oh, so it's a trap. But even if we can't, or better yet, take a nap on top. Oh, right. It's quiet. Huh? Look. You need a good What happened call. here? Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Quick, we have to go. As a dutiful maid would. Already healthy, You've already fulfilled your task as guides, so why do you still linger here? Haven't you already seen enough trouble for today? Huh? Who's there? <sighs> if you were Fatui, I imagine that you would be entitled to a generous reward from the Tsaritsa herself. But now, you're nothing but draw. Hmm, where should I start? If it weren't for that lovely little. <laughs> Stopping. So you've been planning to take. Huh. As one of the. She will you get that which she desires. <laughs> I'm not asking for your. The time for discussion and. Either way. We now. The battle. Battle? So you're the. <laughs> you. <laughs> When Signora, instead of confronting you directly, when she faces a worthy of but as for me, we won't let what happened in. Oh, so you. Besides, you could never defeat me. Not a <laughs> fighting talk. I love it. This chance is hard to come by, so show me all you've got. So very few ever get the chance to square off with a Fatui Harbinger. So come now, amuse me, and don't you dare disappoint. Nice and spicy. How are you becoming? Cowering already? Leave it all to me. Boba, get them! Give up! Submit! Celestial Voyager! Not bad, not bad. She did it! Get it. Run all you like. Nice and spicy. Cowering already. I must leave no stone unturned. Wide open. Hey, get it. How on this come? Run all you huh. like. Huh. Don't waste shot. my time. Not bad, not Blood. bad. Not Stay bad. Stay You've got a trick or two. <laughs> Good. No wonder Senora was so wary of you. Well, that just means I can go all out. Brace yourself. This is about to get tough. Now, 
Show me what you can do against the might of a harbinger! I must leave no stone unturned. I'll catch up. But they still need me. No use hiding back there. All you do is run. Go, Barbara, go! You drop all the Got you. No use hiding back there. Break! We think Has everyone stopped singing? I got a question. You've got some skills. Come on, I your artifacts and talents dodge when you want, not when you can. What are it matters? Come on, Huh? 
இது அந்த அளவுக்கு தெரியாது பக்கத்துல டெலிபோட் இல்லையா அட்வென்ச்சர் தேர்ட்டி போது இதுக்கோ போலாமா நீட் பிளே டு பிளேனா புரியல பிளே ஹிட் ஏன் ஒரு அக்கௌண்ட்ல அறுபது போதே பெரிய மாடா இருக்கு ரெண்டு அக்கௌண்டா ஃபுல் டைம் எதுலயே இருப்பீங்க போலயே கச்சாவா அப்படின்னா இப்ப எனக்கு பிரச்சனை டாச் பண்ண தெரியல ஆல்ரெடி அதுலதான் இருக்குன்னு நினைக்கிறேன் இங்க பாரு ஃபுல்லா எயிட்டு தான் ட்ரை பண்ணுவா அது அவங்ககிட்ட தெரியுமே நோய் எனக்கு தேவைதானா கேட்டுட்டு <laughs> என்னது 
allergic to. Father in Jubu, for all you bonus. Back one, back one. Post or In the game, it is. Hmm, defense to four star. What am I? Barbara, can you put it here? Barbara, can you put it here? Water character. What is it? He poor Ningong health come here, chin, oil kill the come here, chin, jangling health come here, chin, after the Vachitalin in Napa Nona. And he is too long. The water is used for the three of the teacher. Hilla, if a vision and other, if a lark health come here, Put it a barbara or a e put to go. Put it a barbara or an arm attack on a e put it an arm attack on a lark of healer. A brilliant Amma. Wow, it looked impressive enough from this is where all the cadets more. Oh, so it's a trap. But even if we can't take or better yet, take a nap on top of a mountain. Oh, right, it's quiet. Huh? Look, uh oh, quick, we have to go make sure that the. You've already fulfilled your task at- Huh? Who's there? <sighs> if you were Fatui, I imagine that you would be entitled to a generous reward from the Tsaritsa herself. But now, you're nothing but dross. <laughs> Although I'm deep- Don't you think that trying to stop me- <laughs> Stopping the more- So you've been planning to take the- <laughs> As one of the eleven, for she will get that which she desires. <laughs> I'm not asking the time for discussion and diplomacy either way. We now the battle. Battle? So you're the. <laughs> you could say. <laughs> when Senora offended the deed instead of confronting you directly. When she faces a worthy opponent, she. But as for me. The... We won't let what happened in Mondstadt ever happen again! <laughs> oh, so you intend to fight me? Besides, you could never defeat. <laughs> Fighting talk, I love it! This 
chance is hard to come by. So show me all you've got. So very few ever get the chance to square off with the Fatui Harbinger. So come now, amuse me, and don't you dare disappoint. Cowering already? You wait. Run all you like. Leave it You've made some progress. Progress. Not bad. You've got a trick or two. <laughs> Good. No wonder Senora was so wary of you. Well, that just means I can go all out. Brace yourself. This is about to get tough. Now, show me what you can do against the might of a harbinger. Don't waste my time. Your life is mine. Oh, you're so pretty, Adikiramaria. 
Not bad. Your swordsmanship is quite impressive. But that's about as far as you'll get. <laughs> Didn't think you had that card hidden up your sleeve. Oh, quiet down. Stop acting like some wide eyed recruit. You've seen this world. You of all people should know. This should have been expected. Well, then, I'll be taking more access gnosis now. <laughs> I see. Well, this is most unexpected. You... You beat me to it, didn't you?
die here. <laughs> Look, child's back to normal again. <clears throat> well, then, time to cool off. It seems the burden of the foul legacy transformation was too great for my body. I lacked the opportunity to think this through. And now that I consider the matter more carefully, you never had any chance of beating me to the Gnosis. You had no connection to the Gnosis, no matter where it had been taken. That's what we've been trying to tell you! We didn't take it! Your show of ability today far surpasses that of Senora's initial assessment of you and Mondstadt. Tell me, how could that be? Because I'm really doing my father. You already know the answer, don't you? I can see it in your eyes. But if that is a secret you wish to keep, I guess I'll just have to curb my curiosity. This battle has already left me satisfied. Anyone who strives as I do to grow stronger shall be called a friend. Even if our friendship can only be shown in battle against one another. Pretty sure that's not the normal way to make friends. Unfortunately, I must bring this amiable conversation to an end. My quest still beckons. Given that the Gnosis wasn't taken by anyone, then we must look once again to the beginning. Perhaps it was never in the Exuvia to begin with. In fact, it might be that the Exuvia was just a diversion of sorts. What? So you mean that... Yes, it appears so. Interest. It seems that the guardian deity of the capital of commerce is also well versed in little maneuvers beyond the boundaries of contracts. As such, we must now look to our backup plan. Backup plan? I had hoped it would never come to this, for the weak will be swept away in the process. The truth is, the world belongs to those who pursue strength. I seldom willingly involve myself with the weak. Unfortunately, we cannot be picky about our methods as Fatui Harbingers. So what are you planning to do? I will awaken the god that lies dormant beneath Guyan's stone forest. A god? Osile, overlord of the Vortex, who was defeated by Morax, the Geo Archon, in the Archon War, and who has remained pinned beneath the waves by the Geo Archon's stone spears ever since. If such an ancient god would be unleashed upon Liyue Harbor, defenseless without the protection of its deity, do you think the cunning Rex Lapis would just stand aloof and watch the ensuing destruction? But the Archon War ended 2,000 years ago! How can an ancient god appear in a world now overseen by the Seven? Simple. I've already prepared the means to awaken it. Hey! Those are sigils of permission! Oh, Paimon remembers now! The Fatui have been researching them! I saw you research with your own eyes. You have been trying to get them? Indeed. 
The one that was given to you was just a byproduct of our research. With the power of so many sigils of permission concentrated in one place, along with that which was bestowed upon me as a harbinger by our Tsaritsa, breaking the subduing might of the Geoarchon spears for a time should be no obstacle. Using the powers of ancient gods in such a situation fails to interest me, and is largely against my principles. But knowing that such an action will not only force the Geo Archon to show its hand, but you as well, that makes matters a little more intriguing. <laughs> Let's see. Will the nation that has lost its deity be swallowed up by an ancient malice once more? If you wish to drown together with the people of Nia, you're free to stay and enjoy the show. Huh? He's... he's already gone! That guy is fast! Uh, what's going on? Just as we came out of the Golden House, we really wouldn't have known which way to go. <sighs> Did we make it in time? Is the Overlord of the Vortex still in the sea? It hasn't destroyed Leela yet, has it? What are you doing here? Huh? Hold on! It's the Adept Eye! What are you doing on the Jade Chamber? Paimon thought you were arguing with the Chising! Is the fighting over? Faced with a calamity of such magnitude, we have agreed to put our differences aside for now and unite against this common enemy. <laughs> oh, Paimon gets it. So how do you plan to defend Leela? Eh, just seeing this Overlord of the Vortex guy puts a pit in Paimon's tummy, even from all the way out here. It's not just you. We've got new Millilith recruits who can't even stand at attention without shaking. The force of an ancient god's presence seems to be too much for ordinary people to handle. Which is why we must stop that monster before it gets any closer to Liyu Harbor. So the Archon War was fought 2,000 years ago against enemies like that thing? Now that's scary. <sighs> So will the power of the Chising, Millilith, and Adepti gathered here be enough to stop that god? We've already discussed this together, and our conclusion is... not necessarily. What? But all of you are supposed to be the guardians of Lele. Can't you think of something? One certainly could. Huh? The Chi Sing did once research the matter of the Guizhong Ballista when it piqued their fancy. And as fate would have it, one who did craft the Guizhong Ballista with one's own hands is here. For what could you mortals ever learn of Adepti mechanisms? Yet it would take one but a little tinkering to turn this Ballista into an engine of war beyond your wildest thoughts. <laughs> I suppose this is one blessing from the Adepti that we should be thankful for. So be it. We shall use the upgraded Guizhong Ballista to fight off that god. All the Adepti here can lend their strength to man it. We haven't a moment to spare. Our battle begins now. Yep.
fight to go to the thing now. The three Adepti are manning the Guizhong Ballista. Do not let the Fatui disturb their work. All able Millilith, with me! Let's go help too! We Adepti have not faced a god in several millennia. Let one see what you're made of then. What strength remains within you, one wishes to witness. The Fatui! Their attacks are unrelenting! Huh. How daring. Snezhnai's diplomats will answer for this afterward. Every last one! And the Gunda or the Gunna already. I'm a heal but they're fine. Give up! Were you about to say we can't hold them, children? Huh? Don't lose heart. Here, take this. This is gentle energy. That light from your body. It's like the time in Julian Cars. Wow, it's not a pink shockwave! This granny's really strong! No, you're not going anywhere! Don't be a killjoy! It only like just like I went too far. My work will not stop. Huh? 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 Don't waste my time. Yes, I am. Huh. This is it. Huh. With the blood of the Chilean, I guard you with all your might. I too did this during the Archon War. Huh? Huh. So this is what Ganyu's like in a fight. <laughs> Take my power and run as I do. Please, don't do this! Yara, come here. You can take your power. You can take your power. Perhaps you can withstand three forms of adeptal energy at once. This will hurt a little. Please bear with us. Once you've adapted, try to use them in battle. Give up. Sir, 
requires caution. I fear that the god's power has reached its peak. In other words, if we hold here, there's nothing worse to come, right? This isn't good. ourselves fully. Now. Mm. The Guizhong Ballista is destroyed. Huh? Without its covering fire, retaliation shall be difficult. But the Jade Chamber is our last line of defense. We can't give another inch, no matter what. I have another idea. Uh, what do you mean, Lady Ningguang? I'll sacrifice the Jade Chamber. What is the meaning of this? I understand. Traveler, lend me a hand. Farewell, old friend. Goodbye for now. Let us meet again in the future. Chamber Puji. Sorry. Is it finally oh, over? Fifty percentage of the wood is slow. The ominous aura of that monster has indeed begun to fade. The effects of the sigil of permission last but a short time. It will be some time before the Overlord of the Vortex can make any waves again. We are indebted to you for your assistance. If the Adepti hadn't happened to be here, the future of Liyua Harbor would surely have been in great jeopardy. Save your flattery. 
We didn't just happen to be here. Surely you won't pretend to have forgotten the reason for which we came. Come now. There's no need for such harsh words, Cloud Retainer. I've heard that when Ningguang began learning to do business, she had already started setting aside part of her then limited income in preparation for building the Jade Chamber. At first, it was only the size of a small room, but with continued expansion, it has become the palace that lies before you now. It is a testament to Ningguang's entire life, both as a businesswoman and as the backbone of the Liu Qixing. Seeing the Jade Chamber destroyed in the defense of Liu means much to her. To me, such cooperation and sacrifice deserves at least some recognition, don't you agree? Well, I was really hoping you would say that such sacrifice could at least be used as some leverage in our negotiations. <laughs> Thank you all for hearing me out. We know very well why the Adepti came here today. But please forgive us. We cannot yield to your wishes. Oh? 3,700 years. According to our records, the Adepti signed a contract with Rex Lapis to protect Liyue 3,700 years ago. Even to this very day, Liyue and its lands have stood the test of time, immovable as stone, just as it was thousands of years before. This is truly no small feat. But that does not mean that the Liyue of today is the same city as it was all those years ago. Do not merely cast your protective gaze upon the land. Instead, focus your sights on our city and each of the citizens that dwell within it. Are you questioning our means of protecting Liyue? Hmm... I mean no offense. I simply hope that our Adepti forebearers would see Liyue in a new light. Ha! <laughs> forebearers, you say? One doubts you would be fit to be part of such a lineage. This morning, Rex Lapis appeared to me in a dream. What? In the dream, I yearned to tell him that we Chi Sing, though mortal, are equally bound to the contract. Each passing generation of the Chi Sing leaves many things of value to be inherited by the next generation. I also thought to tell him how the past generations of Chi Sing had strove under his rule to survive in our mortal world. But I dared not speak. I could only gaze at him in silence until the moment I awoke. Oh, Ningguang. We are all on the same side here. Yet another perspective. What are you trying to say, Outlander? When there is a discord between the Guardians and those, they were made to defend. Harmony becomes very difficult to restore. Right! That's something that happened in Mondstadt. It's a story about the Four Winds and the people of the Animal Archon. The Animal Archon sought to quell the strife between the two sides, because he believed that such conflict would only scar the hearts of both, and that nothing good would come of it. This is what we learned in the City of Freedom. Each of the Seven Nations has its own scars from the past. Though your point is the very height of simplicity, as Adepti, we've become a laughing stock to be chastised thus by an outlander who has lent us such succor. All right, all right. Didn't Ning Wong suggest that we should focus on the city and each of its citizens? I know I already have, so why not see for yourselves? I apologize for appearing in full armor. I am afraid I cannot show the proper courtesies. And who are you? I am Feng Yan, a sergeant of the Millilith. I have come to extend my thanks to the Adepti. I thought this battle would perhaps be my last. But thanks to the aid of the Adepti, our forces were not as badly battered as I feared we might be. Although I am a mere mortal soldier, I promise to hold the line and never betray the grace given to us by the illuminated Adepti this day. Hmm. <sighs> Why does everyone look so down? Didn't we just beat that big monster? <laughs> Weren't you frightened, dear? It was quite the predicament. 
I wasn't afraid. All the strong Millilith guards were there, and those powerful heroes with their visions were there. Everyone was there. When danger is near, everyone always protects me. And the rest of the time, they make fun toys and tasty snacks and, and loads of things that make the harbor so pretty. Thanks for protecting Liyue Harbor. Please come visit us for the next Lantern Rite. Unfortunately, we wouldn't be able to participate. Huh? Because we are Adepti. Oh, okay. It must be hard being an Adeptus. Aww. You see, this is what Liyue is like today. The country of contracts is grateful to the Adepti for their protection. But it is no longer necessary for the city to rely on the Adepti's power to solve every little niggling matter. Although their blood is weak, there is still strength to be found in those we call mortals. The time of contracts between gods and Liyue has long since passed. Now is the time of contracts between Liyue and its people. Hmm. Seeing the port around us now, it is hard not to feel a bit out of place. Wouldn't you say so, Cloud Retainer? Your line of inquiry is askew. One did not spearhead this expedition to Liyue Harbor. Hmm. Seems like the Adepti have had a change of heart. They understand what the people have said. They are trying to understand from the perspective. Let us return now. Eager to leave, conqueror of demons. <laughs> yes, one understands what the conqueror of demons means. The city of Liyue has changed much after our long separation. One fears that by the time one finally grasps the new contracts of Liyue, you humans would have once again changed the place beyond recognition. Fair enough. Away we shall, and return whence we came. Hmm. Since we Adepti have consensus, then one shall persist no further. But how will we ensure that the Liyue Chising will not simply exploit their power once we depart? In my view, that... <laughs> All right, Moon Carver, you needn't worry. It seems to me that this right of supervision is best left to the people of Liyue. <sighs> Looks like the conflict between humans and Adepti was avoided. All's well that ends well, huh? You can see the day. Oh, right! It's nice that we've got peace and all, but we're forgetting one thing. Child wanted to unleash the god so he could lure Rex Lapis out. But we were able to handle the overlord of the Vortex on our own. So Rex Lapis never showed up. Oh, and speaking of that, don't we still need to get to the bottom of that Archon's death too? Hyman doesn't get it, but isn't the strongest... Slade, we have the Adeptilus Rite of Parting that we're organizing? No idea where Zhang Li's gone. Let's ask for him at Wangsham Funeral Parlor. Is there anything I can do for you two? I'm afraid that Wangsheng Funeral Parlor isn't in the best state to receive guests. We've come to see Zhang Li. Could you please tell him we're here? Unfortunately, Zhang Li isn't here at the moment. It seems he went to Northland Bank. Doesn't the Northland Bank belong to the Fatui? Last time we saw Zhang Li was before we went to the Golden House. Do you think he doesn't know about the attack on Liyue? Visiting the Fatui at a time like this could only mean more trouble. We had better go and make sure that everything is okay. Kick down. Ooh. <laughs>
You call this cooperation between Harbingers. Cooperation involves communication, you know. <laughs> Don't take it to heart, child. Besides, aren't you happy that you got to skip the formalities and bring chaos to the land? I'm sure you must have enjoyed that. Oh, it seems that some of your friends have arrived. Hey, it's Zhang Li and Child. And you, you're also one of the Harbingers? The Glora. <laughs> it's you two. I believe we've met once before. In the city of Bards, was it? I'm glad you still remember my name. Ah, right. I imagine that it must have been rather hard to forget watching helplessly as something precious was snatched away from your friend. I still have time to get no, you back. don't let her get to you! You've yet to gather the powers of all seven elements, and our last battle at the Golden House was almost more than you could handle. So it might be best to keep things peaceful this time, seeing that two of the Harbingers are here. Well, if it isn't you two, this is our first time seeing each other since Liyue was nearly wiped off the map. This is certainly a bit... awkward, wouldn't you say? Hmm. Paimon knew that we should never have trusted a Fatui Harbinger. Oh, now don't say that. Sure, I may have misled you, but I never had anything against you personally. Besides, I thought we were getting along quite well together, didn't you? Nothing personal. We just have... different views, that's all. The real deceivers here are Senora and Zhongli. Curse them for leading me on. So actually, I think... Stop wasting time, child. There'll be plenty of time to chat once I'm through here. You remember the agreement, Morax. Now, if you would be so kind. What in the world are you talking about? <sighs> the contract is fulfilled. That which thou seeketh is now bestowed unto thee. For my promise is solid as stone. What <laughs> 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 Get that. What? So you're the Lord of Chio? No, wait. That's an exciting twist and all, but why give the Gnosis to the Fatui? I do not give it for free. I give it as agreed upon in the contract, for it is a matter solely between the Tsaritsa and I. A little bit too far with that whole fake death thing? Everyone was preparing the ceremony for you and splat! This big dragon falls out of the sky and all of Lyric goes into an uproar. Talk about a disaster. <laughs> Gathering all the forces that had been bubbling behind the scenes and then stirring them together in a pot that was bound to boil over. That's what he wanted to see, am I right? Wait, what? Perhaps it's best that I explain. As you know, I've dwelt upon this world for more than 6,000 years. It is now 3,700 years ago that I founded Liyue together with the Adepti. Even boulders that can withstand whirlpools will erode with the passing of time. I kept convincing myself that cracks had not begun to form and that the end of my time had not yet come until one drizzly day. As I was strolling along the harbor, I heard a merchant tell one of his workers, You finished your duties. Go ahead and call it a day. I stood motionless among the crowds, asking myself, Have I already finished my duties? Oh, Zhang Li. But as I began to consider relinquishing my divine role, 
I soon discovered that many reasons still remain to not hastily depart. Was Liyue, the city I had dwelt in for so long, already prepared to enter its next age? I decided that a test was needed in order to reveal the answer. So I feigned my own death, and gathered the cast of Child, the Adepti, and the Liyue Chising to play their roles together on the stage that was Liyue. That's right, which is why I continued to safeguard the Gnosis until now. So you mean that if the Chaos ever reached the point of no return, you would simply appear and use your divine powers to bring Lila back under control? Of course, and it would have been all too easy for him too. Just as a child quickly matures after losing their parents, so has Liyu matured when faced with the death of its deity. In the end, the resolution to all that has transpired was even more satisfactory than I could have hoped for. Take the Adepti, for instance. Owing to their years of seclusion, they were the least informed. Yet when faced with a crisis, they commendably showed the greatest amount of restraint possible. Not only did they manage to cooperate with the Qixing, but in the end, they even made efforts to understand the hearts of the people. Credit is also due to Signora, the emissary dispatched by the Cryo Archon to fulfill our contract. At my request, she kept everything she knew in strict confidence. This despite the eavesdropping ears of her colleague, Chai. This meant I could remain as Zhongli, even having the chance to fulfill the age-old traditions of Liu in this mortal form. Thank you for joining me on this journey, Traveler. All of these things turned out as I had planned. There is only one thing that I had not anticipated, and that was the conduct of the Liu Qixing. I had expected them to do no more than the Adepti, to come to the defense of Liu. But when all was said and done, they seized the opportunity to supplant Liu's divine protectors, and used the subsequent power vacuum left by my death. Huh? That doesn't sound good at all! Ha! <laughs> On the contrary. I think it is excellent. I had always feared that it was too soon for them to take over from me. And it was also that which I longed for the most. As such, this is the best parting gift anyone could have given this god of old. Hey, what about me? Doesn't anyone feel the least bit of remorse for deceiving me? You've practically kept me in the dark! <laughs> I think that thanks would be more appropriate. You certainly played no small part in all of this. Wreaking havoc and turning the city upside down. The Lord of Geo ought to thank you for your performance, if anything. If you hadn't created the pressure of a battle between mortals, a Depti, and a god, the lump of coal resting in the hands of the Geo Archon, Liyu, would never have been able to become a dazzling diamond of a city. Huh? Just whose side are you on, mocking me like that? Are you itching for a fight? Hey, haven't you learned the Liyue saying, Don't always call it as you see it. <laughs> well then, with the Gnosis in my possession, I have no use for such idle chatter. We should return to Zapolyarni Palace and seek an audience with Her Majesty, the Tsaritsa. Come, child. Ah, fine. I'll meet you there later. I'm not sharing a boat with the likes of you. <laughs> Do as you wish. Now then, is there anything else you wish to ask me? Right! As Zhongli always told us, a good trade is a fair trade. Paimon has no idea what could be a good trade for a Gnosis. Realistically speaking, there is no such thing. Huh? However, I am the god of contracts. For thousands of years, I have made countless contracts. If the deal was of no benefit, then I certainly would not be inclined to agree to it. 
My agreement with the Cryo Archon will be the last of my contracts as the Geo Archon. My contract to end all contracts. As for the bargaining chip that the Tsaritsa used to balance the scales, uncover that answer for yourself in your future journeys. I wonder when I'll be as tall as my big sister. <laughs> be as tall as my big sister. Everyone is working super hard. We should be too.
standing around is making me so sleepy. Everyone is working super hard. We should be too. Are you tired? Try my new spicy energy drink. I'm sure it'll wake you up. be as tall as my big sister. Standing around is 
is making me so sleepy. be as tall as my big sister. Are you tired? Try my new spicy energy drink. I'm sure it'll wake you up. Working super hard, we should be too. Are you tired? Try my new spicy energy drink. 
I'm sure it'll wake you up. வைக்க விரும்பல நான் கட்டுப்படுத்த விரும்பல அதே மாதிரி எல்லாரும் ஃப்ரீயா இருக்கும் ஏன்னா அவனே காட் ஆஃப் ஃப்ரீடம் அவன் அதான் விரும்புவான் ஆனா ஷாங்லி இருக்கா பாரு அவன் வந்து காட் ஆஃப் கான்ட்ராக்ட் அவன் வந்து அந்த காலத்துல இருந்து இப்ப வரைக்கும் கான்ட்ராக்டுக்கு பயங்கரமா இது பண்ணுவாங்க ஒரு கான்ட்ராக்ட் போட்டா அதை மீறக்கூடாது பிரேக் பண்ணக்கூடாது ரூல் பிரேக் பண்ணக்கூடாது அந்த மாதிரி இருப்பான் அப்படி போட்ட கான்ட்ராக்ட் தான் யார் கூடனா கூட அந்த கான்ட்ராக்ட் வந்து அவன் மீறவே மாட்டான் ஓகேவா ஏன்னா அவனே காட் ஆஃப் கான்ட்ராக்ட் தான் அவன் ஓகேவா அதனால வந்து அவன் வந்து சிங்னோரா கூட கான்ட்ராக்ட் போட்டிருப்பான் இந்த மாதிரி இத்தனை வருஷமா நான் பாத்துக்கிட்டு இருக்கேன் ரெண்டாயிரம் வருஷத்துக்கு மேல எத்தனை வருஷமே தெரியாது அதான் கரெக்டா தெரியவே தெரியாது அவன் அவ்வளவு பழைய அவன் தான் இருக்கிறதுலயே வயசானவன் இருக்கிறதுலயே ஓகேவா அவன் வந்து இந்த மாதிரி கான்ட்ராக்ட் போட்டிருப்பான் சிக்னோரா கூட வெல் சின்ஸ் वी आर गोइंग थ्रू विद दिस ரைட் ஆஃப் பார்ட் என்ன கான்ட்ராக்ட்னா நான் வந்து செத்த மாதிரி நடிக்கிறேன் நேல் ஆன் தி ஹெட் சரியா கையில ஏ தெரியாது ஓகேவா எனக்கு வந்து இந்த ஊர் மக்கள் அவங்களே நான் இப்ப இல்லனா கூட அவங்களே பொழைச்சிக்க உங்களுக்கு தெரியும் அப்படின்ற மாதிரி கான்ட்ராக்ட் போட்டு செத்த மாதிரி நடிச்சி அவனுக்கு அம ஃபியூனலுக்கு அவடே எல்லாத்தையும் எடுத்துக்கிட்டு இருப்பான் ஓகேவா போட்டு சேர்த்து கடைசியில ஓகே இது வந்து இவங்களால சமாளிக்க முடியல ஏன் சிக்னோரா வந்து சிக்னோரா போ சைல்டோ இல்ல பட்டு யாருமே வந்து அவங்க கிட்ட ஏன் வெண்டி கிட்ட புடிங்கிட்டு போனா இல்ல சிக்னோரா அந்த மாதிரி புடுங்க சொல்லு வாயில அடிச்சு கிழிச்சு அம்ச்சிருவான் சிக்னோரா ஒண்ணுமே பண்ண முடியாது இவனே அந்த அளவுக்கு பவர்ஃபுல் கார்ட் அதனால தான் இவனை கான்ட்ராக்ட் மூலமா இது பண்ணி அவங்க அந்த வாங்கிட்டு போய்டா இக்னோசிஸ்ன்றது இவனுக்கு பெரிய விஷயம் கிடையாது There's only one okay, real well, possibility in my mind. I forget the okay, assassin is that okay, Fatui-Fall. Uh, Youngish, pretty high in rank. rank. I, I think Fatui. Fatui. He certainly are very suspicious. 
God of contract is doing that. Like, this is our currency contract. Nari salamatai. Yadi me. Nari pretty salamatai. Ane udhi yalla me thiriyo. Para salamatai. Rex Lapis won't be around to protect you this time. Thiriyo or vaigar vada gadu. Aralada naado first le the maintain mani thei arna. Yeh mande bank officer e. Yeh mande funeral parlor vada thei arni. Yena solid time the suspense thiriga. Okay, ma. Aralada naani uschi. Yena saman me na bank officer engra. Thiriyengra. उंडीपुर <laughs> 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 उंडीन <laughs> 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 Do you think the person who assassinated our Lord and re- now that you mentioned it, that's very possible. Yes, it's very possible indeed. I mean, it all fits together. That person must have colluded with the evil god to harm Rex Lapis. Oh, that wicked! Right. Still, what sort of supernatural prowess must this person possess to be able to do such things? Ah, uh, forget it. Guessing's no use to us. Look, the Millilith over there looks like he's about to make an announcement. Let's hear what the Ministry of Civil Affairs has to say for. Listen to the Ministry of Civil Affairs. Hear ye all, the Chi Sing's words. Though a dragon soars ageless as the mountains, it too must return to dust. This is common knowledge. Gods and adepti live glorious lives, but both light and shadow have their season. So too must they face divinely appointed trials. Rumors and hearsay abound on the streets that Rex Lapis was murdered. Having been thwarted in his trial, Rex Lapis's soul has recouped the celestial heights. He beseeches the people of Leo to grieve not and to let not their hearts be saddened. Nor are they to believe street-born rumors or indulge in baseless speculation. I was telling you, Matta. Even, even our main plan, na na, Rex Lapis. Ah, but how are you going to do it? Even that needs a translation on what the Chi Sing's announcement said. I'm going to tell you about it. I'm going to tell you about it. So that's how they're spinning it. Something feels off. Why would they suddenly give up looking for the murderer? Not to mention how this excuse sounds like something that just made up on the face of the chief. Or even more, that Rex Lapis wasn't dead. Did John tell them in secret after his nurses changed hands? It can't be right. Ooh, seems like the right of parting has been going on for a while now. Let's go have a look.
just who I was hoping to see. I was just thinking to myself, Gentry mount -sized thugs have been mysteriously absent for a while now. You wouldn't know anything about that, would you? Oh, don't worry. You won't be hearing from them again. Oh? What? What happened? Not only that, but we'd like to purchase your cornerstone. Huh? <clears throat> oh, oh, I see now. You're you're in this trade too. So you're trying to beat him to the post, eh? Appearances can be deceiving, that's for sure. But I don't care who you are. A discount of 70% is simply impossible. The maximum I can do is 40% off, and even then I'm I'm only breaking even. No need. We'll take it at the market rate. Y you mean you're not trying to force the price down? What, what, what's going on? Have I died and gone to heaven? I can't believe it. I will make a profit on this batch after all. But gentry mount-sized thugs could still come back after I've sold it. If Paimon told you they're not gonna bother you again, then you'd better believe they're not gonna bother you again. Just, just... Huh. Okay, then. My situation can hardly get worse from here in any case. But tell me, what on earth do you plan to do with so much core lapis? Actually, it's for a commission. Can't go into too much detail. We will send someone to collect the good trick. Thank you. Thank you a million times over. I really don't know what to say. Don't thank us yet. We don't till we finish it at least. Good people always get what's coming to them in the end. And so will the nasty people. Anyway, let's get going, because apparently we have a show to watch at the Feiyun Commerce Guild's warehouse. Now I can get back everything I lost. <clears throat> Two hours so little. Two dogs. Welcome. The final act in this drama would not be complete without you two here as audience. You better believe it! We're the ones who've been doing all the work! What exactly have you been doing all this time? Uh, well, naturally, I used the time to immerse myself completely in Legend of the Shattered Halberd. I managed to finish the book off, and I enjoyed every minute of it. Divine Halberd, an ominous sword. Mere, the way the story develops across the first five volumes. Nothing short of exemplary. But the sixth volume? Oh, words fail me. How blessed we are to have such an author grace our world with such works. And this is related to Gentry Meltsai, how? It's not. But when something surpasses expectations to such a degree, one must show one's appreciation. This ending of the book good? It was rather good. Thanks. I only hope that as our plan reaches its denouement, it too will live up to its expectations. Why does Paimon have to be the only one who doesn't get what's going on? No fair! Uh, so go on then, tell me, what are we doing here? And what's this big dramatic showdown thing that's supposed to happen? Think about it. Gentry Mautsai goes searching for Core Lapis all over Liyue Harbor, and he doesn't find a single piece. He panics. Without the goods, he can't fulfill his contract. And if he can't fulfill his contract, he hears a rumor that the Feiyun Commerce Guild is the culprit. Panic turns to disbelief. Jinshi Moutsai is a hugely powerful figure in the business world. Never has anyone dared to target him like this. So regardless of whether it is revenge or a swift resolution that he seeks, he is certain to... So it was you! You were the one sticking your necks out for Chang the Ninth! Speak of the devil. I went everywhere trying to find someone selling Core Lapis before I realized the Feiyun Commerce Guild had been on an acquisition spree. 
Capcor Lapis is hardly a rare mineral, and yet suddenly the stocks dry up, just like that. Explain yourselves. What is the meaning of this persecution? We are not persecuting you, but protecting another, one to whom I am indebted. Upon witnessing an injustice, it is a perfectly normal response to rush to the aid of he who has been wronged. Was it not one of your own men who said, this isn't over? <clears throat> you clearly don't know what's good for you. I won't beat around the bush. Master, if you please, seize their Corlapis! Fight. Someone needs a sister. No, my sword. Time to act. Body and mind. Rain outlines your fate. Let me leave you a verse. Pay your dues. Impressive. You are no commoners. <sighs> to con Their strength is almost spent. Finish them off. The core lapis is almost within our grasp. Might I remind you that the Fatui's relationship with you extends to business matters only. I did not lend you my men to have them stir up trouble at your beck and call. W w what are you saying? Master, everything I did, I did with only one thing in mind. To complete the order! Then figure it out by yourself. D don't go. Wait! Master, wait! My lord, what are you doing here? Are you hurt? Thanks to this valiant young woman, I am unscathed. My lord? I did not see that coming. You? You are the heir of the Feiyun Commerce Guild? Indeed, my liege. I am Xing Cho, disciple of the Guhua clan and second son of the Feiyun Commerce Guild manager, and I make no secret of it. Drats! I've been played like a fiddle. Gentry Mautzai, coercion and intimidation are hardly the attributes of a respectable businessman. I shudder to think what the Fatui will do with you if you fail to provide their core lapis. You meddling swine. Well, go on. Tell me, what will you sell it for? Since you asked Chang the Ninth for a discount of 70%, let's fight fire with fire, shall we? Three times the market rate sounds fair, no? <sighs> How dare you subject me to such viciousness? This is a malicious and calculated attempt to run me into the ground. Deep breaths now. This is a simple decision. Will you buy or not? I... I, I <clears throat> fine. Have it your way. I'll find the money somehow. On behalf of the Feiyun Commerce Guild, I thank you for your business and hope you will continue to do business with us in future. You? Funny speaking, book reading, guhua geeking, Tsing Cho are the heir of the Feiyun Commerce Guild? So that massive stash of Mora you let us burn through in a day? That was from your private vault? Twas but a paltry sum. I got to make a very sound investment while putting Gentry Maltzai in his place. A classic two birds, one stone situation. Don't you rich kid take care of his class of fun? <laughs> Very droll. My family can always tell me from my handwriting. It's certainly one of my distinguishing features. Yikes! Paimon's been calling you Guhua Geek this whole time! 
Paimon read in one of these martial artist novels that when rich heirs like you get angry at someone, you have their arms and legs chopped off. <sighs> Paimon's toast and sorry, very sorry. Please don't hurt Paimon. Calm down. Since you can fly, you hardly need your legs anyway. <sighs> save me, save me. This is not a drill. Repeat, this is not a drill. What kind of Jokes aside, I have the two of you to thank for this successful resolution. Meanwhile, Legend of the Shattered Halberd was positively riveting. Much obliged if you could return it to Chang the Ninth for me. I did nothing, and hence deserve none of his gratitude. The two of you, meanwhile, though strangers to the circumstances, stepped in and saved the day. To have made such valiant and chivalrous friends is more than enough for me, my liege. My lord, uh, forgive the intrusion. It's about your father. Please inform my father thusly. I have averted a disaster and earned a sizable sum of money in the process. Might this meritorious act compensate for my prior transgressions and earn me a few more days of freedom, perchance? Leg for all your clever long words, the fact is you're just a lazy bones who doesn't want to work. <laughs> what if I told you that a reward awaits you at Cheng the Ninth's palace, and not just his gratitude? A reward? Hmm. Well, that sweetens the deal somewhat. Ah, it seems whatever I say, there's no persuading you to stay. Why did you do the thing is supposed to be very high? Oh, I didn't realize you weren't aware. Thank you in advance for returning the book for me. I will take my leave now. May we meet again, fellow merchants. Finally, you're back! This morning, the pawnbroker showed up and gave me back my entire collection. I'm positive that you must have been behind this once again. Thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Please don't say that. You have no idea how much this means to me. The Chang family was a prestigious household in Liyue back in the day. Unfortunately, after I took over the family's affairs as heir, a series of business setbacks devoured our fortune. Since then, I've saved for years, hoping to restore the house to its former glory. In the end, everything was riding on this Corlapis deal. Were it not for you, this barren wasteland in the mountains would have become my final resting place. Wow, that's the second heir we've met in this town. I'm sorry, what? Uh, nothing? Oh, here's your book back. Wonderful. Legend of the Shattered Halbert. I Do people really look down on the Guha clan so much? Actually, the art is centuries old and was once held in high esteem. But now it has faded beyond recognition. To instigate a revival, you need to inject some fresh blood, but it's hard to attract budding young talent to a dying art. In any case, Guha kids these days. Take that young rascal Xingqiao, for instance. For all his talk about repaying kindness with kindness and whatnot, what has he done to show for it? You're the ones who've displayed a genuine sense of responsibility. Maybe Google resilient is... Ah, uh, what does it matter? Anyway, you wanted the Liyue volume of the Tevat Travel Guide, didn't you? I'll fetch it for you. It's yours to keep. In addition... Here is but a small token of appreciation for your huge generosity. My ore is sold, and my treasured books have returned. I can't believe it. Uh, what? What was that? Paimon's 
saw something fall out. Oh, nothing, nothing. That little rascal surely isn't. <gasps> Even if an antique is priceless, the happiness it brings lasts for only the moment that you obtain it. Story of Conquest. Nope. 
You can't keep up with me! Get ready for the gliding champion of Mondstadt!
भी कैसे फंड कर ले Can't have treasure unaccounted for.
Is this the end of Jian Chuan? Look, it's Ningguang and Kuching. I... As said previously, Rex Lapis's soul returning to the heavens is the end of the contract. And... 3,700 years of contracts burnt and reduced to ash. We, the people of Liyue, were indeed prosperous. The long, unending dream of our Archon walking among us. Hmm. Now that we have awoken from our dream, we must learn to say farewell. Will you stand with us as we re-establish our contracts? As we So concludes the words of Her Eminence the Tianquan. Does Her Eminence the Yuhang have anything to add? Huh? Is she looking this way? Traveler. Yikes! She really is looking our way! Is that the Traveler who they say defeated the Ancient God? So young! The Liyue Qixing always repay their debts. And as you have heard, our eyes see far and our reach is long. Name your price. You deserve that much. Whoa! Well, could you help me put up some missing person posters? Roping you in was possibly the most masterful move we could have made. Uh, <laughs> Why you? Were you just trying to look cool earlier, or are you really that selfless? If you were looking for someone, you could have just told me that in private. The cleanup of the premises, managing the crowds as they exit, making an account of the right? There's much that remains to be done. I didn't... Song Ling. Hey, Zhong Li! Look at this! caught up in their emotions, thinking that they'll never see Rex Lapis again. And here you are looking all relaxed. <laughs> Why would I not feel more at ease after laying down the burden I have borne for 3,700 years? Right. If the two of you can spare the time... I should treat you to a meal at the Shinya kiosk. Ha! <laughs> that sounds like big talk, Zhongli. Paimon might have believed you if you were treating us to some third round knockout, but you'd have to pay out your nose just to stand inside Shinya kiosk. Are you sure you can afford it? Hmm. You're right. I do like the Mora. Hmm. Been most entertained, but why would As the Rex Lapis Morax, I can easily create Mora. But since I have chosen to walk this earth as the mortal Zhong Li, I should abide by the same rules that mortals do. When I was journeying with you, though I still had the Gnosis in hand. I knew that I must soon retire from my role as an Archon, so I had to... rehearse a little for my new life. Oh, no wonder! Paimon gets it now. You didn't look at the price tags when we were spending because you've never had to. 
But since you weren't used to not being able to just make more Mora as and when you wanted to, you had to try becoming a parasite to society who lives off of other people's credit. Well, we were only spending Fatui money. You don't have to say it like that. In the City of Commerce, we do not merely exchange money or goods. We also exchange knowledge, memories and foresight, as well as positions, roles and lives. The Archon Morax could never experience life as the true mortal Zhongli could, no matter how many times he descended to be with his people. <laughs> I must thank you for that. I will treasure the memories that I made as Zhongli, traveling the streets of Liyue with you. And it was fine journey. That is true. But there is no journey that does not end. No meetings without partings. Hmm. Paimon thinks that we should make a move and continue our search for the Seven. I fear that continuing your journey may be difficult. The nation that neighbors Liyue by sea in Azuma is presently closed. Closed? Yes. The nation has been closed by order of its deity. The Electro Archon Ball. And just as the people of Liyue preferred to call me Rex Lapis, she too goes by another name among locals in Inazuma. Um, Paimon thinks we've heard that one before. Uh, right, Raiden? That is the case. And since Raiden is also the Shogun of Inazuma, people call her the Raiden Shogun. No, no. Though people at the wharf were saying that the situation in Inazuma is very tense, Paimon doesn't remember that always being the case. Zhongli, since you're Rex Lapis, shouldn't you know something about what's happening there? Just how did Inazuma become a closed nation? It's because of visions. Visions? When faced with circumstances beyond their control, Humans often bemoan their lack of power. But if a person shows true strength of will at a desperate and fateful moment in their life, the gods will look upon them with favor. This is what visions are. Magical foci bestowed upon those who have been acknowledged by the gods. Uh-huh. That's how people in Tevet see it. But starting from last year, the Raiden Shogun began promulgating the Vision Hunt Decree. Vision Hunt Decree? Yes. It was an order to seize all visions within Inazuma's borders, and to inlay them upon the hands of the statue of the Omnipresent God. They want to seize visions? But why? Aren't visions blessings from the gods? I should think that in the Raiden Shogun's eyes, it is precisely because they are divine blessings that they should be under the sole dominion of divinity. Whoa, that's harsh. The Animo Archon is the god of freedom, and the Geo Archon is the god of contracts. For her part, the Raiden Shogun is the god of eternity. It seems as though she has finally decided to eliminate any unstable elements that could pose a threat to her eternal realm. The fact that even I, the oldest of the seven, have now passed away, will only strengthen her resolve to pursue eternity. Knowing her, she must have again quoted that adage she is most fond of when proclaiming that decree to her people. Seven ideals for seven gods. And of these, eternity is nearest unto the heavenly principles. 
<laughs> All right then. Was there anything else you wish to know? Hi, <sighs> Gilly. Yeah, about that. Before the cheesing made their announcement, we listened to a lot of people talking on the way. Most of them put the blame for everything on child. These are indeed false accusations. But it remains undeniably true that Child did send people to the Jade Chamber to prevent the Adepti and the Qixing from defeating the ancient god. I've heard that Ningguang is busy milking that for all it's worth on the foreign relations front at the moment, browbeating the envoys of the Fatui. Ha! <sighs> Those poor Snezhnayan diplomats. If it were not for Child's exalted position as a harbinger, I'm certain that they would have shifted all the blame to him and called for his dismissal by now. All right then. Was there anything else you wish to know? <laughs> ah, that was a good one. Failing a divine trial. How they came up with that excuse, I will never know. That said, the reason why the Qixing were so eager to resolve the incident and stop pursuing the culprit was indeed because they received news in secret that Rex Lapis was not dead. I hinted as much to the Adepti as well. How did I accomplish that, you ask? Hmm. Uh, have you ever heard of this particularly convenient Adepti art known as gifting dreams and visions? All right, then. Was there anything else you wish to know? The time of the Adepti has long passed. If even the Liu Qixing don't want to face that truth, then what future is there for Liu? Kuching is absolutely right in saying this. Now, though I did laud Ningguang's desire for power, believing this to be a good thing, and thought as a matter of course that she must have been behind the Qixing's plan to take governing power over Liu from the hands of the gods and Adepti. Could the original person who brought up the idea of seizing power have been... Hmm... All right then. Was there anything else you wished to know? That's right! Zhang Li, now that you don't have your Gnosis, what's going to happen to all the Moran to that? Since Morax is dead, are they all just gonna disappear? Also, isn't the Golden House the only mint in the entire continent? Will it even continue to work? The Mora present now will not vanish. But the Golden House will indeed have to cease operations for a lengthy period of time, since creating more- <laughs> This is terrible! We're all about to run out of Mora! The world is coming to an end! Yes, this is indeed a major issue from a financial standpoint. Uh, well, I suppose we'll just leave such troublesome matters to the Liu Qixing to debate. Oh, a private fund. Hmm. This does seem like a good logical common sense idea. <sighs> it's... What's a shame? It's a shame that I didn't think of it at the time. All right then. Was there anything else you wish to know? Nothing else, could hmm. Well then. I suppose you'll have to find a way to get inside this closed nation.
complete the teapot. I feel like running. Raining again. This will hinder our vision. We must remain vigilant. Ah, children, come, come. <laughs> You've arrived at just the right moment. I've been looking for you. Oh, what is it, Granny? Need any help? Oh, no, no. You've done so much for Leo Harbor already. I could hardly ask for more. In fact, my old friends and I have been putting our heads together to think of what sort of gift we might give you in return. A gift? For Paimon? Oh. <laughs> oh, child, you are so very modest. Uncommonly so, even. But you mustn't decline this gift. I simply won't allow it. When you traversed my old teapot in search of the cleansing bell, I heard your little friend mention that you often camp out in the wilds. That simply won't do, especially since I imagine you still have a very long journey ahead of you. Fortunately, I have not yet grown so old as to see my subspace creation abilities atrophy. Oh, did my friends never mention that to you? Well then, it is a blessing we old folks once received from Rex Lapis. Part of our illumination, if you will. I will not go into too much detail, but subspace creation is the ability to create a small, autonomous pocket world. The teapot that you entered previously was a little trinket created using that ability. So, in the eyes of an Adeptus, creating a magic teapot world is just child's play, huh? Oh, indeed, the teapot is nothing to boast of. One such as myself must depart from this realm to create a world of one's own. Rex Lapis, on the other hand, moved mountains and seas. That is what one might call an exercise of true power. Uh, but that's enough nostalgia for now. The gift that I have prepared for you just requires a few final materials to add the finishing touch. What are we seeing? That's right! Finding stuff's what we're good at, after all! Oh, settle down now, children. There's no need for you to go running hither and thither. I have already found a fleet-footed youngster to prepare what I need. What's more, I doubt that you would know how to find the materials I am searching for. Some of them are very rare indeed these days. Well, for starters, I require some shimmer soil from the banks of Dihua Marsh. Back in the day, it could only be found where the glazed lilies thrived most profusely.
you would have to dig downward, following the roots of the glazed lilies. And if you were lucky enough, you just... But almost no one has been able to find Shimmer Soil in this manner since Dihua Marsh came to be the way it is today. Even more difficult to find is Smaragdus Jadeite, which must be chiseled from the rock of the chasm. Or so it used to be. Ever since the Black Cliff for Forge opened for business, they've slowly but surely stripped the mines all but completely bare of it. In any case, Smaragdus Jadeite is an adept eye treasure, and the adeptal power within is not something that most humans can withstand. Extended contact with it is, in fact, harmful to humans. Ah, goodness knows if that child will succeed in finding these items. Well, since you're an Adeptus, Granny, the person you asked for help, they must be an Adeptus too, right? Hmm, yes. I suppose she does count as an Adeptus. She counts? So many Adepti in Leeway Harbor. We seem to bump into them all the time. It feels like even when you go out to eat, you could be sitting next to an Adeptus and never even know it. Oh, <laughs> maybe so. Who can say? A fair few of my old friends are rather fond of mundane mortal life, after all. I'm back, Granny. Hey, young oh, I don't believe we've met. Ah. Allow me to do the honors. This child here is Yen Fei. She's the one helping run some errands for me. Yen Fei, I believe you've already heard of the Traveler and her traveling companion. Of course, who hasn't? Much has been written about you in the Millilith's records. You became one of Liyue's most wanted after the Millilith marked you as a suspect following the incident at the Rite of Dissension. Before finally defeating an ancient god together with Granny and her associates, and subsequently being cleared of any and all suspicion by the Chising. Ah, <sighs> what a shame. A shame? A shame that we didn't meet sooner. If we had, well, I can't say that I would have been able to clear you of suspicion immediately, but it certainly would have been less, uh, embarrassing for you. Allow me to introduce myself once more. I'm Yenfei, a legal advisor. Got a legal problem? You can come right to me! Oh, yes, here's my business card. You'll find it has my contact details and office address. Keep it handy. If you have an urgent issue, just leave me a note at this address. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention, I offer a very generous discount for first-time customers. All right, Yenfei, all right. Let's get to the business at hand. I do not think these two are in any dire need of legal assistance at the moment. You'll have to excuse Yanfei. She's always been like this. Ever the talkative one when it comes to her own affairs. Are you really an adeptus? Paimo was gonna ask the same question. You seem really different from the ones we've met before. An adeptus? Uh, I guess. Kinda. My old man said he was one anyway. He mentioned that he once campaigned with Rex Lapis for a long old time, and then after that was all over, he went back and married my mom. They had me, and once I was all grown up, the two of them upped and left on a journey, leaving me with Granny here. Well, that's a bit casual for an adeptus. Aren't you guys supposed to sign solemn contracts to protect Leo at Harbor and all that stuff? What do you mean he just went back to get married? Well, my dad did say that he'd talked it through with Rex Lapis and that he was fine with it. Even contributed towards the wedding gift, apparently. Anyway, let's not dwell on that too much. So, Granny, I've gotten a hold of most of the stuff you asked for, except for Smaragdus Jadeite. I couldn't find any at all. Is that so? Hmm. But Smaragdus Jadeite is really rather essential. Yenfei, are you sure you can't find some other way? They have helped Liyue greatly, after all. It is only right that they are duly rewarded. I know, Granny, you've told me a thousand times already. Well, the chasm's definitely a no-go, but there's still a chance we can figure out some alternative means of procurement. Hmm. 
Hold on a moment. Let me have a look. Whoa! That's a really thick book. What kind of things do you write in there? Commercial consultancy. Or, or, Snezhnaya. Ah, found him. Krussel, a Snezhnayan merchant who once came to me with some legal queries on certain articles in the legal codices. If my memory serves, all of them had to do with rare ores. He mentioned that he was considering acquiring some Smaragdus Jadeite to make hairpins, and wanted to know if there were any legal ramifications that he should be aware of. Said he was planning to sell them in Snezhnaya. So, I guess I'll go look for him. Oh, you want to join me? I suppose that's no problem, but it's best if you just stand by and watch. If you try to get involved, you'll only risk placing yourself in legal jeopardy. Wow, an adept is imploring us to avoid... Best we be a little more careful than usual while we're with her. Hello, Mr. Crossell. How's business been? Oh, good, very good. All thanks to your advice, Miss Yanfei. <laughs> You're too kind. I was simply doing my job. Now, I believe that the last time we met, you mentioned that you were looking to source some Smaragdus Jadeite to make hairpins. Have there been any further developments on this front? Uh, well, yes. As a matter of fact, uh, in the end, I did acquire a small piece of Smaragdus Jadeite and had it fashioned into a pair of hairpins. Miss Yanfei, might I presume that you have an interest in the hairpins? I must apologize. I've already rented them out to a lady named Zhe Chiao. If you'd like to inspect them, you may have to wait quite some time. Wait! Isn't Smaragdus Jadeite really rare? Aren't you worried about the hairpins getting damaged or lost while they're being rented out? No, I'm not worried in the slightest, because I signed a contract with Ms. Zhu Chiao before renting them to her. The contract makes it quite clear that if she loses or damages the item in question, she must compensate me for its full original value. In return, I included a clause that guarantees the Smaragdus Jadeite is genuine, with a penalty of ten times the item's value payable by me to Ms. Zhi Chiao in the event that it is shown to be a fake. Guaranteed genuine, with ten times the value payable if this claim is shown to be false. Yes, these terms are very clear indeed. Of course. This way, both the client and I have the assurance we need. To ensure fairness, each of us has retained... In that case, might you know where Miss Zhe Chao lives? We'd like to pay her a visit and have a... Oh, of course. She wrote her address down when we signed our contract. Thanks a lot, Mr. Crossel. We'll be off now. Another target tracked down by Outrider Amber. 
Lo poate o lea, vie la da mi. Dar ca. Ala la la. Pari kit la po. Oh, whatever shall I do? Yes, that's me. Is there something I can help you with? How do you do, Mr. Chow? We understand from Mr. Crossel that you recently rented a pair of hairpins from him. My associates and I are very interested in them. Would you mind letting us take a look at them? The hairpins? <sighs> I can't lend them to you right now. I... I've lost them. I don't know how it could have happened. I always kept them right by my side and I hadn't even worn them yet. I spent so much money on them. If I have to pay their original value... There's no way I could come up with that amount of money on such short notice. Why did you need it first place? I... My family is in the ore business too. But business has been suffering ever since the chasm was sealed off. We now have a backlog of paid up orders just sitting around. So we've been having to purchase some stock from other ore merchants to complete them. A big banquet is coming up in a few days and several ore merchants I know of will be there. I need this opportunity to mingle and discuss prices. That's what the hairpins were for, to... Well, to keep up appearances. I can't have them looking down on me. But now that I've lost the hairpins, what will I do? Ah, <sighs> why does Paimon have a sudden strong sense of deja vu? Deja Maybe because this spot where we some we can help. Would you really? I sent a commission to the Adventurers Guild, but I haven't heard anything back from them yet. Hold on. Don't run off looking for the hairpins just yet. Mr. Chow, would you let me have a look at the rental contract you signed? Huh? Well, I mean, sure, I have it right here. Here you are. Let me see. That's right! Yanfei said she's a legal advisor, didn't she? Maybe she can help Ju Chow somehow. That would be still acceptable. True! Though surely there must be a win-win solution. Right. I finished reading the contract. The terms are very clear, and they do indeed stipulate that you must pay Mr. Crossel the original value of the hairpins as compensation for the loss. Furthermore, the contract also expressly states that the amount of compensation must take current market prices into account. And given the rarity of Smaragdus Jadeite, I fear that the final amount of compensation may end up being significantly higher as a result. Even higher? Oh no. Uh-oh. Jichou looks like she's about to faint. However, all of this is assuming that it is indeed genuine Smaragdus Jadeite that was inlaid into the hairpins. Did you really have to pause before saying that part? Anyway, the hairpins are lost, so how exactly would we be able to find out if the Jadeite is genuine or not? Whichever way you look at it, we've got to start by finding those hairpins. Except that if we found the hairpins, there'd no longer be any need to check whether the Jadeite is genuine, would there? Uh, seems right. Please. Please, I... Don't trouble yourselves over this. The fact is, I lost the item and I should pay compensation per the contract. It's such a huge sum of money. However much it is, I will have to pay it. My family are merchants, after all. It's vital that we keep our word and respect our contracts. Now that it's come to this, I really shouldn't keep Crossel in the dark any longer. I'll go and inform him of the issue, and then... negotiate the amount of compensation. Mm, yes, legally speaking, it seems this is the most sensible course of action. But before that, I have some questions about the hairpins. So hold on a moment, Mr. Chow. When you first touched the hairpins, what did you feel? What did I feel? Well, I remember that the gemstones set into the pins were perfectly smooth to the touch, like the finest quality jade. My family has seen much jade pass through its hands in the past, so I am quite certain of my judgment in this matter. Hmm. Smooth to the touch. Finest quality jade. Something the matter? No, it's nothing. I just need to re-examine a few things. Let's head over to Mr. Crossel's. Oh, 
Ah, Miss Yanfei, you've returned. With Miss Jichao in tow, too, I see. How are the hairpins? I trust you're quite satisfied with them? Hmm. About that. You lost them? Are you serious? Do you have any idea how expensive they were? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Truly, I am. I'll pay the compensation as per our contract. Every last Mora. Mora? <laughs> Do you have any idea what I had to go through to get my hands on that Smaragdus Jadeite? I, I just don't... <laughs> Forget it. Talking won't bring them back. Since Miss Yanfei is here, I suppose we can just have her estimate the amount that needs to be paid. No problem. But before I can give an official estimate, I'll need to do a little market research. Ah, yes. And if I may just confirm again, it was in fact genuine Smaragdus Jedi inlaid into the hairpins, correct? Of course. Genuine article guaranteed, or I pay back ten times the value. All right. Understood. I'll conduct some market research, and once I'm back, I'll provide an official assessment of the sum owed by Mr. Chow in compensation. Please wait here, Mr. Crossell. Thank you very much. <laughs> How could she lose my hairpins? She'd better pay every last mora that they're worth. Looks like I'll have to find some way to raise that money. Please wait, Mr. Chow. I have something to discuss with you. It's not convenient to speak here, so let's find somewhere that we can sit and talk in more detail. It is as the stars foretold. The character has been made with you. Hmm? Character has been made with you. That's it. What should I try? Are you going to get it? Come on, what's on the? Miss Yunfei, what is this about? No, what I wanted to talk about is, there is a chance that the Orin laid on those hairpins may not be Smaragdus Jadeite after all. What do you mean? Are you implying that you already sneaked off and found them? Obviously not. I'm no adventurer, let alone a member of the guild. I don't run thankless time-consuming errands for a living. Let's just say I made some deductions. I don't know if Granny told you this. But Smaragdus Jadeite is found deep underground and contains very concentrated elemental energy. If mere mortals come into contact with it, well, they'll be sick in the best case. And in the worst case, they could even experience a dramatic change of personality. It most certainly would not be smooth to the touch. Miss Your Chow, did you at any time feel unwell while the hairpins were in your possession? No, not at all. I felt perfectly fine the whole time. Not even the slightest bit unwell. I didn't feel anything special at all, in fact. Hmm. Now that is strange. I noticed earlier that there were elemental traces in Mr. Crossell's vicinity. If I have deduced correctly, he may still have the Smaragdus Jadeite in his possession. If that's the case, we should go confront him right now and expose his dirty scam right to his face! Absolutely not. If we were to confront him now, there's no way he would admit to it. Eventually, he would find some argument to compel us to leave. And then, he'd throw the Smaragdus Jadeite into the sea the moment we were gone. After that, he would simply insist that Mr. Chow pay up per the contract. He would lose nothing. Meanwhile, we would have to look under every stone in Liyue, hoping and praying that the hairpins do actually still exist somewhere in this world. So vivid that Paimon thinks it might be experience talking. Oh, it certainly is. I've seen my fair share of situations like this, and brute force methods are certainly one way of resolving them. Fortunately, I have far more elegant solutions at my disposal. I'll share them with you in due course. Well then, since you're so experienced in dealing with problems like this, perhaps you could help me, Miss Yunfei. Oh, that won't be a problem. But first, Mr. Chow, can I ask you to please sign this contract? Huh? 
to be a contract for everything. Paimon can't even keep track. They had one more for every time we hear the word contract. It feels like Yante is even more concerned with them than a certain someone else we know. These are my formal terms of engagement. Everything prior to now has just been pro bono advice. But for me to investigate any further, I require a written contract. Any work commissioned but not bound by a contract cannot be relied upon. Huh? Contract Kundada. Illa. I understand. I will be glad to place this matter into your capable hands if you will take it, Miss Yunfei. No problem. Just sign here, and I'll sign too. Okay. Now write your address here, and then sign on this page as well. And I'll also need your signatures on pages 5, 7, and on the very last page. Finally, if you could just use this ink pad to make a handprint over here. <sighs> Children. All right, that should do it. My fees are the same as always, and they're written in the contract. Have a look through and let me know if you have any questions. I've had a read through. Everything checks out. Well then, here's your copy of the contract. I will retain the other copy. Need me to ending? Not for now, no. Despite how intractable this problem might sound, it will actually be quite straightforward to resolve. One, I don't believe you have been part of an investigation like this before. In which case, hopefully this should be quite the experience. Miss Yunfei, I have to ask, why are you helping me? Because, as it happens, I'm currently trying to acquire some Smaragdus Jadeite myself. I notice strong traces of geo-energy around Mr. Crossel, so perhaps he has, in fact, secured some. Whether he actually made it into an item of jewelry or not is a separate matter. But either way, it's a lead. As long as we follow it, who knows? We might just be able to get our hands on some Smaragdus Jadeite. Also, the idea of someone abusing the law to their advantage? I won't stand for it. But again, let's not dwell on this. Let's go to... Hmm... Where can we find someone who processes ore? Ha! Ah, I've got it! Let's pay a visit to Chateau, the boss of the Jade Mystery. He's a professional when it comes to working with stone and ore. If Mr. Crossel had his ore worked on at all, Chateau would undoubtedly have been his first choice. Why, hello there, honored customers. Welcome to... Th oh, it, it, it's you, Miss Yanfei. Is, is, is something the matter? Surely not more spurious claims that, that my jade betting is rigged and, and no one can ever win? Oh, I swear on all that is sacred. No, nothing of the sort. Has a Snezhnaian merchant named Crossel enlisted your ore processing services recently by any chance? A Snezhnaian merchant named Krosel, you say? Hmm, I do remember that. He brought me a piece of ore, claiming that it was Smaragdus Jadeite. That was the first time I'd ever encountered it, so I had no way of telling if it was really Smaragdus Jadeite or not. But if a customer insists, far be it from me to contradict them. He was quite generous with his money, too, so I didn't give it too much thought. I processed the ore as per his request. Hmm. Do you have any leftover debris from your work on it? Uh, why, yes. It was my first time encountering this ore, after all, so I kept a few loose shavings to study myself later. They're right over there, in fact. Thank you, sir. We'll take a look at them. Don't deceive me. The cross sections and patterning suggest that these are Smaragdus nephrite shavings. Yes, it's not particularly rare, nor is it especially valuable. It's used to make jewelry all the time. I've heard it said that Smaragdus nephrite is in fact the outer layer of Smaragdus jadeite, though no one's ever proven it. A thin layer of separation, huh? If you must see for yourself, try examining these shavings for traces of elemental energy. 
Smaragdus nephrite is an entirely ordinary ore, containing no elemental energy whatsoever. Is that so? Well, we might as well give elemental sight a shot. So, did you find anything? So they really are different. But wait, how come Jichao was able to tell what it was just by looking at the shards? That There's nothing special to it. It just so happens that I've come across a great many of these in my time. These two stones actually look very similar. Someone without a deep understanding of them would find it very difficult to tell them apart. There may be only a subtle difference for the casual viewer, but that translates to an astronomical difference in terms of the market price. And, I'm sure, a significant difference in the cost of having them carved into shape. All right, let's focus up. We're going off on a tangent. But never mind, Shirto. Why would Mr. Crossel... <sighs> unusual actions have unusual reasons behind them. Let's take some of these shavings back to Chateau. Ada? Miss Yenfei? Might I be so bold as to inquire? Um... If you could just confirm for me once more, sir, Mr. Crossel did indeed claim that the ore he brought to your store was in fact Smaragdus Jadeite, did he not? Uh, yes, that's right. I still have a record of the job with me, in fact. Um, here. It says quite clearly, uh, one chunk smaragdus jadeite, uncut. Then I have no further questions. But could I borrow the processing record and these stone shavings? Of course. But might I ask why you need them? Oh, I have my reasons. Ah, yes. Please sign here on this affidavit. This document shall serve as signed proof that these stone shavings originated from the, uh, ore that Mr. Crossel brought to your store. Please read it carefully. Hmm, yes, I see, I see. <laughs> Forgive me for asking again, Miss Yanfei, but might I know the nature of the incident on this occasion? I wouldn't say there's been an incident, just a minor issue. Thank you, sir. I'll take these with me. With this hard evidence to back us up, Crossel won't dare try to deny what he did! On the contrary, this is far from sufficient to build a case. We need to find something a little more... compelling. If you want to make jewelry, you need a professional jewelsmith. <sighs> Let me think. Jewelry... Jewelry... Aha! Got it! Sinksy. She often helps people to find a jewelsmith. Let's go pay her a visit. Well, that was quick. How come you know so many people? Because lots of people come to me for legal advice every day. As you know, Liyue Harbor is the city of contracts. And contracts, well, I should say laws, are very important to us. But the amendments made by the Tianchuan to our laws are unnecessarily complicated. As such, legal advisors like myself provide quite the popular service indeed. So you help them make sense of the law. But didn't you say that it's hard to understand and impossible to finish? Yes, well, that's no obstacle, because I've memorized all the legal codices. You memorized them? <laughs> you sound surprised. Knowing the law inside out is a legal advisor's bread and butter, you know? This is what it could be coming out of creativity. Oh, this has nothing to do with being an adeptus. I just like reading things. Again, with that casual tone. Well, that's that then. Let's go look for Sinksy. Oh, I'm gonna go. Yenfei, it's you. Has something happened? Have no further trouble from then on? Yes, of course. I'm just here to ask you a few questions. Has a merchant by the name of Crossel asked you to put him in contact with a jewelsmith recently? Crossel? 
Yes, I remember him. He's a merchant from Snezhnaya, no? Yeah, he came to me with a chunk of something he called Smaragdus Jadeite. The design of the hairpins that he gave me was quite intricate, so it took me some work to find someone who was up to the job. Eventually, I found an older jewelsmith who made them exactly according to his specifications. This order was on hold for a very long time, and only completed quite recently, which is why I remember it so well. Doesn't seem like there's any evidence to be found here. Miss Inksy, I'd like for you to confirm for me once more. When Mr. Crossell commissioned you to find him a jewel smith, did he or did he not assert that the material he presented to you that day was called Smaragdus Jadeite? Yes, I'm sure of it. The hairpins were made using many expensive materials, and the asking price was quite high, so we had to put this transaction on record with the Ministry of Civil Affairs. Mr. Crossell wasn't very familiar with the necessary procedures, so I filed it on his behalf. I also kept a copy for my own records. See for yourself, the item is called Smaragdus Jadeite Twin Phoenix Pins. The inlaid gemstone is recorded as Smaragdus Jadeite. The document even has the official seal of the Ministry on it. Thank you, Singsi. Now, could you let me borrow this document? Sure. It isn't serving much purpose here anyway. I t Nothing you need to worry about. Just a minor issue. I'll return your document as soon as I'm done with it. Thanks again! Why is everyone's first reaction always to assume someone or something is in trouble? Must be natural legal consultant. Hmm, I believe we have almost all the evidence we need. We just need to make one last trip. Let's go to Boo Boo Pharmacy to speak with Dr. Baiju. Boo Boo Pharmacy, oh. Tell you, you. You know with the snake around his neck? What do you want to oh. speak to him for? Because only he can provide an authoritative statement confirming that Smaragdus Jadeite is harmful to the human body. Once we have this final piece of evidence in our hands, we can wrap this case up. To what do I owe the pleasure? Though I'm afraid that if you're looking for a little <laughs> Chi Chi, she's out gathering herbs. And if it isn't Miss Yen Fei as well. Now that's an even rarer honor. What business brings you here, might I inquire? Some charlatans peddling ineffectual medicines again, no doubt? No, no. I'm here this time to ask if you're familiar with Smaragdus Jadeite. Smaragdus Jadeite? Why, yes, there is some information about it included in the sixth commentary on the Seven Mountain Treatises. The Seven Mountain Treatises states that this substance springs forth from stone marrow within the mountains and will bring disaster to any mere mortals who touch it. It is abundant in elemental energy, so if someone without a vision is in contact with it for a prolonged period, best case scenario, they fall ill. Worst case scenario, they'll suffer great changes in personality and their illness will only ever get worse. Huh. Anyway, I'm sure you didn't come all this way just to chit-chat. Knowing you, Yenfei, and given the specific nature of your question, I suppose that you're about to ask me to write an official affidavit attesting to the pharmaceutical peculiarities of Smaragdus Jadeite? That is indeed the case. If you would be so kind, Dr. Baiju. No trouble at all. It's just a single document. Won't take me a moment. I would mention, though, that you are not the only one who's developed a curiosity for Smaragdus Jadeite recently. A Snezhnayan merchant came to ask me about it not long ago. But after I gave him my reply, his expression shifted to one of remarkable disappointment. I wonder, Miss Yenfei... If your pressing business might be related to the Snezhnayan merchant? Ah, you needn't concern yourself about that, Dr. Baiju. 
Thank you for penning us that document. I'll make sure to compensate you in due course. You're too kind. Take care now. That Baiju guy is as weird as ever. Is it just Paimon, or does it feel like he was fishing for something back there? Dr. Baiju's always been like that. Well, we have the evidence we need. Let's go find Mr. Crossel. Miss Yanfei, have you finished your investigation? I trust you will now be in a position to assess the compensation due? Yes. My investigation is indeed concluded. I can now provide a final figure for the amount payable. Wonderful. Well then, please, could you do the honors, Miss Yanfei? Of course. Ahem, <clears throat> according to the stipulations of the contract. Mr. Crossel, you must pay Mr. Chow ten times the original transaction price in Mora. Sure. Wait, what? M me pay her? Surely there's been some kind of mistake, Miss Yanfei. Not at all. According to my investigations and the material evidence that we've gathered, the substance claimed to be Smaragdus Jadeite that was inlaid within the Smaragdus Jadeite twin phoenix pins that you rented out to Mr. Chow was, in fact, Smaragdus Nephrite. Now, the contract states very clearly that ten times the price shall be paid should the article not be genuine. Accordingly, you are liable for this sum, which is payable to Mr. Chow in Mora. Material evidence? What material evidence? Why, Miss Yanfei, you cannot frame me like this! I spent a huge sum to obtain that Sparagdus Jadeite, and yet you claim that the ore inlaid on the hairpins is somehow fake? I demand to see your evidence. Indeed. Only a testimony from an expert witness involved in the processing of the ore can serve as an authoritative assessment of whether it is genuine. Traveler, please produce the evidence in question. This is a processing record from the Jade Mystery, along with stone samples and an affidavit signed by the business owner, Chateau. Seriously? Even the boss there couldn't differentiate between Smaragdus Jadeite and Smaragdus Nephrite. How does this prove anything? In any case, Smaragdus Nephrite is the outer layer of Smaragdus Jadeite. So I had him cut away the Nephrite, he returned the valuable Jadeite core to me, and some Nephrite samples remain in the store. What am I missing exactly? Th that's an unsubstantiated belief. Well, your claim that my ore is fake is just as unsubstantiated. And we are here to talk about evidence, aren't we? Ugh. Looks like our first piece of evidence didn't convince him at all. Seems like he came prepared. What should we do next? Hard evidence. Something legally binding. We have... <laughs> this document proves that my hairpins are the real deal, doesn't it? This is the Ministry's seal, after all. It shows that the ore inlaid on the pins is indeed Smaragdus Jadeite. Our second piece of evidence didn't work either. And this guy's getting more belligerent by the second. We live in Gunta. Wait a second. Hmm. You know, you could be right. Perhaps the hairpins are the real deal after all. Of course I'm right. All the evidence shown supports my story. Well, hang on a moment now, because I do recall one final piece of evidence that we haven't revealed yet. Traveler, would you do the honors? This shall serve as decisive proof of our case. What? What's this? Smaragdus Jadeite springs forth from Stone Marrow within the mountains and will bring disaster to any mere mortals who touch it. Sustained contact with Smaragdus Jadeite over a prolonged period will, in less serious cases, cause a mild malady, while in serious cases, the patient may suffer a dramatic change of personality and fall seriously ill. Mr. Crossel, were you aware of these peculiar properties of Smaragdus Jadeite? I... I had no idea. No idea, you say? Hmm, I'd guessed as much. But for you to have rented out such a dangerous item... I'm afraid that this falls outside the scope of my work, but within that of the Ministry of Civil Affairs. However, 
I'm sure that the Ministry will be relatively lenient considering that, as you say, you were ignorant of the danger you posed. Don't worry, Mr. Crossell. I will make sure that all the evidence presented here will be handed over to the Ministry. I trust that you'll give them your full cooperation in their investigations. What? Wait! Wait! I... I knew. Oh, so you knew? Oh, dear, Mr. Crossell. But if you knew of Smaragdus Jadeite's dangerous properties beforehand, why would you... Huh? No, I... The hairpins aren't actually... Aren't actually inlaid with genuine Smaragdus Jadeite? Is that what you were about to say? You do understand, Mr. Crossell, that this means that you will have to pay Ms. Sir Chow ten times the original price in Mora? Mr. Crossell, your answer, please. My client and I are waiting. I... I... Champ, uh... he's seriously intimidating right now. It's like she's a different person. <laughs> Again, that's legal contingency for you. I admit it. I confess. The ore I had inlaid on those hairpins was... was Maragdus Nephrite. B but I'm a victim in all of this, too. I invested a great deal of time and money into acquiring that small amount of Smaragdus Jadeite in the hopes of turning it into a piece of jewelry that would fetch a fine price. But after receiving it and carrying it around for a few days, I started to feel extreme discomfort. I couldn't sleep a wink or eat a single bite. I... I was in a constant state of agitation, too. I went to Boo Boo Pharmacy to get myself checked out only to discover that this sort of stone cannot be worn as jewelry. But how could I let all that money go to waste? That's why I had another pair of hairpins made from Smaragdus Nephrite, which is almost indistinguishable from Smaragdus Jadeite. I kept the real Smaragdus Jadeite in a specially made box. I daren't touch it again. I was worried that someone would see through it, which is why I only dared to rent them out, not sell them. And then, to top it all off, Chi Chao lost the hairpins after I rented them out to her. So, why did you charge she such a external enterprise? Exactly! If they weren't the real deal, why'd you make her pay so much? Hmm? I... I didn't want to either. But when I purchased that Smaragdus Jadeite, some of my business partners found out. I knew they'd be watching closely to see how much I could make off it. If word got out that I sold a pair of fake hairpins, then my days in this line of business would be over. All right, let's cut the appeals phase right there. I fail to see what bearing any of this has on your transaction with my client. According to the contract, you must pay Mr. Chow ten times the original price in Mora, and that is final. Ten... ten times? Crozo looks like he could faint any second! As for me, according to my contract with Mr. Chow, 20% of that sum will go to me. 20%? That's as much as I spent on that Smaragdus Jadeite! Um, there's no need. It's fine. You don't have to pay me that much, Mora. Even if the Smaragdus Jadeite on those hairpins was fake, I still bear responsibility for losing them. Legally or not, I think I owe some compensation for that. M Ms. Chow. You... However, Mr. Crossel, since you have no use for that chunk of Smaragdus Jadeite, why don't you give it to me instead? I'll consider us even. What? But... I... All right, then. This cursed rock's brought me enough grief as it is. Miss Yunfei, I'll turn this Smaragdus Jadeite over to you. I trust that it will suffice as remuneration? Well, um, that's not quite how the rules say this should go. But whatever. It'll do. Thanks so much for your help this time, Miss Yunfei. When you have the time, I'll be sure to visit and express my thanks more appropriately. Oh, come on. No need to stand on ceremony. Now, if I may confirm this again, Mr. Chow, have you and Mr. Crossel come to an understanding? Hmm? Well, yes, I believe we have. Well then, that's good. Mr. Crossel, it seems that my client has no further claims against you. Is... Is that so? That's good. That's good. Actually, Mr. Crossel, I'd like to talk business for a second, if I may. I could see from the hairpins you produce that you're very skilled in jewelry design. My family, on the other hand, works in the ore business, and we have a fair stock of fine ores. If we could join forces, your jewelry designs and our choice ores, 
I think we could do some fine business between us. I, uh, let me think for a moment. Well, that's that. And we've got the Smaragdus Jadeite that Granny wants too. All's well that ends well, eh? Yes, it will be some twist and turn on a movie. Exactly. Usually when someone tells us they've lost something, we end up searching all over the place for it. But this time, you managed to solve the problem with just a big stack of documents. <laughs> Even though the solution didn't involve actually finding the hairpins. The right solution depends on your perspective on the problem. The objective of my client, Mr. Chow, was to reduce her liability to pay compensation. So, rather than looking high and low for some hairpins, proving that the rented item was nowhere near worth what the vendor had claimed it to be was the more efficient solution. Can't see any meeting that I've just like you. An adeptus. Speaking of, you took part in that battle, didn't you? In which case, you would have heard what Granny said. Liuai Harbor is now a city ruled by humans. The title of Adeptus means precious little to me compared to my job as a legal advisor. In any case, don't you think that the Liuai Harbor of today needs legal consultancy far more than it needs Adeptal powers? Paimon can think of someone who would definitely disagree with your reasoning. I think there is most there is involved here, Paimon. Well, since we got what we came for, it's time to pay Granny a visit. I bet she's been on tenterhooks for a while now. Turned. How did it go? Were you able to find the Smaragdus Jadeite? Good, good. Then we have... Well, if we're all set, Granny, I'll get going now. Got a ton of clients waiting for me back at the... Oh, you. All right, then. Go see to your business. I'm off, then. Bye. Oh, yes, Traveler. Make sure you... I've been looking into the laws of other nations as well. If you should ever bump into any trouble with the law... Come now, child. Are you leaving or are you not? If you have no wish to leave, perhaps you... <laughs> I'm leaving! I'm leaving! <laughs> <sighs> that child. Goodness knows where she learned to be so rambunctious. Her father was hardly so riotous or far... <sighs> Indeed she is. Liyue's Che Yanfei might be overly garrulous, but she is also the most... Ah... Uh... Liyue is not the same place I want. All right, then. Let us speak of this no more. Oh, Paimon's so excited! How is it made? <laughs> it is but a single teapot. <laughs> there we go. Hold it firmly. If you were to drop it, <laughs> take these blueprints with you as well. You'll need them if you wish to make your teapot a little more... Wait a minute, Granny! How exactly are we supposed... Oh, you needn't worry about that. I've already arranged for a... Sir...
ஆறு மணி ஆனாலும் முடியாது போலி summon me here. She told me much about you. You may leave all matters regarding the upkeep of this realm to me. Your journey may be far from over, but at least this way you will not want for a comfortable place to sleep each night. So what did he put for Dixon? Though it is the Adepti who create realms such as this, they generally do not have the time of day to attend to the banal matter of their maintenance. <laughs> Thus, we teapot spirits were created to help guard their realms and manage their affairs. You may consider me a butler, if you will. Now, allow me to explain. Have you any blueprints on you? Specifically, blueprints with butte as long as you have a blueprint, you can refact blueprints? Yes, these are the blueprints I'm talking about. Just commit the image of the objects to memory and then simply release the thought from your mind and the... Wow! Is that all it takes? Then we could build a whole city inside, couldn't we? Mm, I doubt it. A golden-eyed adeptus explained this to me at some point in the past. He said that even though subspace creation is a product of adeptal power, this world is not a true one, after all. It provides merely a... M a golden-eyed adeptus? Paimon wonders, who could that be? I hardly remember myself. What's more, I have never seen that adeptus again since. Always did. Well, let's not dwell on that. Have a look around, if there's anything you would like to ask. <laughs> Look for a teapot and listen to it. Talk to the tea street or serve it over to the manage it all manners of teaspoon. You can create any kind of condition. Okay. Materials used to create items there and Oh no, paid the material like you saw for the punishing is not a clear energy rank, seventeen and forty minutes. Great. On city bottom, it's no selling the city audio. There is a chance to be where to show the thing. Accept. This area, huh? Building, city, building. Okay. Oh, the phone. I'm going to go to the outer side. i the Parent. Okay. Let's save it. Let's close it. 
கிராஃப்ட் பண்ணி அப்புறம் வச்சுக்கலாம் இது டீ பாட்டு தனி லேர்ன் லேர்ன் பண்ணு என்னது <laughs> ஆமிங் பாட்டில் அப்படினா அந்த ஐஸ்ல குளுரா இருக்கும்ல அந்த டைம்ல யூஸ் பண்ணிக்கிறது யூஸ் பண்றது ஓகே நான் அதன பண்ணிட்டியா இப்படி இருந்து ட்ரீட் பண்ண தோணுதா உள்ள பெருசாட்டு <laughs> பெருசாட்டவா Do 
I don't know if she's in what's up. But now we'll take the things to this one. Don't do anything to hold this person. Maybe you are not used to the place at the moment, but once you've materialized enough rooms and furniture through subspace creation, Is like in game content, are they the kind of boarding mother pondra? You can get like to keep rumors. Night was spamming is real. They aren't the rooms alone. Goodbye, soldier. Goodbye, solitaire. If you ever have any questions about the realm, escape her. Astrologers must rid themselves of material yeah. desires. Yeah. Only by ridding oneself of clutter can one see the true world around them. Fate is called as such, for it cannot be changed, nor can it be reversed. It can only but be accepted. 
இதுல வந்து கீழே வேர்ல்ட் பர்மிஷன் ஆஃப்டர் அப்ரூவல் போயிட்டான் ஆஃப்டர் அப்ரூவல் அலோ டைரக்ட் அப்ரூவ் டைரக்ட் ஜாயின் அப்படின்ட்டு இருக்குல்ல அதை வந்து அப்ரூவல் தான் இருக்கா ஓகே ஒரே நிமிஷம் இரு அப்படியே இரு இப்போ நேருக்கு சம்பந்தம் இல்லை அவங்க ஓன் இதுக்குள்ள வந்த கோப் மோட் வந்த மாதிரி தான் கணக்கு ம் ஓகே என்ன பண்ணோம் ஹலோ டைரக்ட் டைரக்ட் ஆமா உள்ள வந்துருவாங்களே divination is about precisely foretelling one's written destiny over embellishing that fate only leads to misconception மணி ஆறாயிட்டு பன்னெண்டு மணிக்கு ஆரம்பிச்சுனா வந்துட்டு <laughs> 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 அப்போ இது ஆஃப்டர் அப்ரூவல் போட்டு மாட்டோம் மாட்டோம் போயிட்டு <laughs> 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 It can only but be accepted. என்ன 
அதே <laughs> 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 நான் பேசாம யான்பி ஜோங்லி அப்படி வெச்சிட்டு வந்து ஸ்டோனுக்கு இவ்வளவு வச்சுட்டு லோடி வச்சுட்டு இங்கே அங்க போனோம் கஷ்டம் போயிட்டியா ஏய் சொல்லிட்டு போக மாட்டேன் கண்டு நான் போன அதே மாதிரி இதுக்கு மேல என்னைக்கும் ஏறினே இந்த டிபி எடுக்காம இவன் மட்டும் தான் உயிர்க்கலே ஒழுங்கா ட்ரெஸ் போட்டுருக்கான்
அவருக்கு you need me i'll be there என்னது இந்த பக்கம் அந்த 
மலையில இருந்து பக்கம் ஒண்ணு இத பாக்குது ஓகேவா ஆமா இந்த பக்கம் அங்க இருந்து ஒரு குக்கோட பாக்குது அப்ப இன்னொன்னு வேற ஏதோ ஒரு பக்கம் தான் இருக்கு நீ இத ஆல்ரெடி மூணு குக்கோ திருப்பி பண்ணனே மூணுமே திருப்பி பண்ணியா கரெக்ட்டா இத பாக்குற மாதிரி திருப்பி ஆமா அந்த சைடு இருக்குது இத பாத்துக்கிட்டு இருக்கு இத திருப்பி பண்ண இன்னும் நீங்க திருப்பி பண்ண தலைக்கு மேல பாக்குறியா ஒண்ணு தெரியும் ஒரே இடத்துல ஓடிட்டு பார்க்க 
தொடர முடியல நீங்க <laughs> 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 பேச சொல்லு அவன உள்ள சூப்பரா இருக்கும் நட்சத்திரமா பேசி பேசணுமோ நட்சத்திரா Another test subject. Uh, picked the wrong test subject. நம்மளுக்குற <laughs> <laughs> 
could do with some more fortune. Subject. Melusines are beautiful creatures. Are you ready to put it together? Fate is upon you. Stabilize. Treasure is pretty exhilarating. More of the very traveling night. Decided by destiny. Wait. 
きいいですかあれとインドパカプレイザーだ。My liege, I humbly trust that even one such as I. I'm gonna get down the 
வெப்பனே தெரியுமா ஃப்ளூட்டு ஃப்ளூட்டு தான் இவனோட வெப்பன் அதுவும் ஒரு வெப்பன் அப்படி சொல்லலாம் Haven't you heard? There's a strange water. Ah, ancient out. Barbara hits with the charged attack. Astrologers must rid themselves of material desires. Only by ridding oneself of clutter can one see the true world around them. Divination is about precisely foretelling one's written destiny. Over embellishing that fate only leads to misconception. ஒவ்வொரு 
ஏதாவது ஒரு ஆர்டிஃபேக்ட் கொடுத்து வச்சிரு யார்ட்டனாவது புடி கொடுத்து இவளுக்கா பயிரோ Astrologers must rid themselves of material desires. Only by ridding oneself of clutter can one see the true world around them. by 100 you think that you can hit the 0.3 yearly asa nalla five star kadikuma abadine adik solraru adha 0.3% chance adha solraru avlo sigara kadikkum nu nenikireenga abadine kedacha nalla irukku adha nalla irukku na nanu sonna seri idu standard banner po adha kedikida pappo ஸ்டாண்டர் பேனில் எத்தனை விஷயம் இருக்கு சிங்கிள் பிளேயர் போ that the hero approached the oh, vile yeah. dragon's limpid lair okay easy idikkala idikkala va ingoda va pipi avu ne ethana veno moonu veno ayyo patama galiya podu va kira va va resin gale edan sonna va 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 sultuya ah sikra va you might get by 60 by 100 chance amma 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 chance irukke luck irundha adala kadikum அடப்பா இவ்வளவுலாம் இந்த அதை அதை நான் கேட்டுக்கிட்டே இருந்தே வாய தரக்கவே இல்ல இப்ப சொல்றியா ரொம்ப ரேரே அவ்ளோ ஈஸி கிடையாது ரைட் அது அப்படிதானா இல்ல அதுக்கு அப்புறம் இந்த பேனரே இருக்காது அது only 20 wishes தான் போட முடியும் ம் டபுள் போட்டு முடிச்சு விட்டு வேண்டியதா லக்கிரிகா பாப்போம் அதா லக்கிரிகா பாப்போம் ஆ சரி பிடியே தலன் பார்த்தேன் சரி வா 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 Okay. Let's go. Let's go. 
I never embark on a journey without a good book to accompany me. What happened to the guy? In the hoy? Yark, you are doing it. What happened to this guy now? Three left. That's two years ago. You are. Start the decreasing time. He's a long story, yeah. Night, but the hero approached the vile dragon's limpid lair. Crap, get up. In the crap on the crap on the solder. You can chin the color of water water. Like a coat, daddy, we close to the abyss in four point seven. Up and up. Emma, we know the rich. And the boss from the rich. One bit there. Sing, 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 So, two thousand four hundred removes per month for free. You really are. Like eight more. <laughs> Adding new flow to the obvious in four point seven. Up now. Mama, what a fourth of the remedy clan new floor petting. Oh, Nada. <laughs> Rain outlines your face. <laughs> Crafting table 
monster da niu na. Ama, enga mana monster. I see the value in my own work, but I also see the meaning in all the endeavors of the people of Fontaine. I believe I will continue to take pride in fulfilling my duties. Of solitude. I'm Beto. You've heard of my ship, the Crux, and its crew? If you too love adventure, then join me. If you ever want to trade tactics, I'm always ready. If you ever want to trade tactics, I'm always ready. In Inazuma, the water possesses a depth of flavor unlike any other. Sumeru's water has a rich and complex flavor profile, but it must be seen to fully it. Time to act! Put it for If you ever want to trade tactics, I'm always re uh, cold beer after a hard it's hard to remain on. When stuck on a deserted island, rain is a precious hey, it's just a little light. I see the value in my own. But I also okay. see the meaning in all the endeavors of the people of Fontaine. あ、無人島に閉じ込められる。
ちょっと。<笑><笑> いっぱいなんだ。こちらへ。冒険者協会に加わってからしばらく経ちましたが、冒険者としての活動は順調ですか？うーん、そうですね。自身の実力はもちろんのこと、頼もしい仲間を増やす冒険者の活動には必要不可欠ですものね。なかな
おいおいガイアと何の関係があるんだ艦隊は血のつながりと関係ないだろうその人物とガイアさんの関係は分かりませんが教会の誘いを断ったことだけは確かですもし興味がありましたら探してみてはいかがでしょう何せ教会それにあの方がもし相当の実力者でしたら間違いなくあなたの冒険の手助けになることでしょう自信を持ってくださいあなたはセピロス騎士団の栄誉騎士なんですよあなたが今まで成してきた偉業は多くの銀雄詩人に歌われていますえー、っとそうですね彼の情報ならロレンスさんに聞いてみてください縄文を守る騎士ですのでその人物のことを詳しく知っているかもしれません幸運を祈ります冒険者さんありがとうございます。
Ta-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-